This podcast is brought to you by Pragmatic Solutions, the leading iGaming PAM platform with a modular approach, including many benefits like a fast, secure, and scalable API-based platform integrated with all major third-party products and services. Make sure you head over to Pragmatic Solutions and join our smart thinking. This podcast is brought to you by Pragmatic Play. A leading game developer providing player favorites to the most successful brands across the industry. With an award-winning multi-product portfolio of slots, live casino, bingo, virtual sports, and more, Pragmatic Play is powering up new possibilities of play through one single API. Visit PragmaticPlay.com and discover your favorite every time. Trouble, trouble, <laughs> trouble. <laughs> With Taylor, Taylor Swift in it. Okay, so, so yeah. Phil, oh. let's, uh, let's, uh, let's start on that point. So, um, big story. Betson got fined. I'm oh, not sure exactly I fined. They, uh, they entered a court case and uh, were ordered to pay half a million euro to a former gambling addicted player who lost that money playing at Betson between, I think it was around 2010. Um, encouraged by VIP agents and so on to continue playing. Uh, he lost half a million euro. Now, uh, 10, 15 years later, uh, he managed to recoup his losses in this um, in this very important uh, court case that now opens up for an enormous amount of litigation in Sweden all of a sudden. Bets on share price crashed on the news today. Uh, Kinder share price crashed as well, even though they have nothing to do with this court case, um, only because of the expectation of what's to come here. What's, uh, what's your thoughts on this, Phil? It, it opens up the world to an absolute nightmare now because that, that is a precedent for everyone, other countries, everyone in Sweden, everyone who's ever been in Sweden, every former Betson VIP manager. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> yeah. um, Crickets. It's, yes. it's, but the, the amount of money, because they've, as I said before, they've spent this money already. They have shareholders. They have spent paid the affiliates, paid the game providers, paid everybody, and now they have to pay again the entirety of the deposits for possibly anyone who can get away with this in Sweden. Yeah. Even if they weren't gambling addicted, people will now try. Right. So yes. if they're going to copy Germany, in about three months' time, you're going to see every lawyer that is bored offering right. get your gambling losses back on right. TV, no I mean, win, no fee stuff. We're talking, we're talking potentially tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of euro. Uh, in in losses that uh, could potentially try to be recouped mm. by by players losing this money in the in the early 2010s before the regulation came into effect in 2019. That's a lot of pizza dough to be afraid of. That's a lot of pizza dough. I'm sure that that is the uh, second phobia. <laughs> yeah, pizza dough and actual dough. No, it's 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 bad for game. It's good for players in a way that if it is something serious like. You don't, we don't know the facts, though, yet. We don't know what they really said in court. But if the oh. player can prove they said this repeatedly and it was ignored, then sure. But then why wouldn't Betson settle it? Because like, that is generally the standard practice, that you would settle it before it goes to court. So they must have thought they could win in court, and they did win in court. Right. But then it got appealed. Yeah, exactly. They went in, they, Betson won the case in the first uh, instance of the court and they lost in the Hovrätten uh, in the second instance. And they have a chance to Supreme appeal court. up to the Supreme Court now. And I would assume that such an important case will actually be accepted into the oh, Supreme Court. I mean, that's going to affect a huge amount of the GDP of Sweden itself because a lot of your big companies are not gambling related, but some of them are. Yeah. You've got the license that needs to work. It's yeah. a massive, massive case. Right. Um, share price down a bit, like seven to eight percent on the on the news, uh, like I said. And, and um, question is just even the lawyer got to ask the question, you know, how much could this potentially lead to in the future? And he said, yeah, but, uh, he said this could be tens of millions of euro. And these are just the cases he knows about. Mm. Right. Right. If it's the case, uh, if you take an average of how much bets are reporting in that market, it could be in nine figures. Yeah. And then, and that's euro. And then they've got to worry about the share price afterwards. So the yeah. knock-on effect is going to be huge, yeah. incredibly big. It won't bankrupt them; they've, they're covered. But and we, we're not talking only only bets on here as well. It's important to mention mm. these are all Swedish legacy operators that operated uh, before the um, uh, before the introduction of the license. And that's everybody. 
yeah, and um, the VIP schemes probably look pretty similar to each other between the organizations as well. Uh, Betson, True. Kindred, Kazumo. I that this this could be, this could change gaming kind of globally though, because yeah. if someone copies that a different country, yes, then it just it just amplifies. It goes on and on and on and on. Especially if the EU pick it up, yeah, then everything that you've ever done yes. in history is going to kind of screw with you. Yeah. So be glad that you're not publicly shareholded right now. Yeah. Uh, well, well, I am a, <laughs> I am a shareholder in Betson, actually, just for it, to take of transparency. Is it's that, one of my biggest shareholdings. Is, so uh, is that how you got paid for VIP management back in the day? <laughs> in, in share prices, yeah. from retention. Yes. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's uh, not a great day for, for the Betson shareholders, uh, of, of course, that is that is for, for sure. You, ha you, have a, you have an interesting point, Phil. I, I wonder... So in this case, you know, the, the player, he, the VIP player, he was encouraged to play, mm. to continue to play. According to the court case or according to the story, Betson were aware that this player was uh, showing signs of gambling addiction. I don't know if how they would have been aware that he's of certainty a gambling addict, but they would, uh, there would be clear signs there that he message supports or something like this. Yeah, there's, there's signs and then there's obvious signs or, so perhaps. like if if they're complaining about like what the big one is like complaining about suicide complaining about self-harm about something else yeah. or stealing borrowing money that's your big yeah. tell but if they're asking for bonuses like we had a case once on our side with the mga which went through eadr that was the player was repeatedly asking for bonuses so most players do this but if they do it repeatedly enough then the regulator will think it's a sign of looking for free money, looking for gambling, and therefore gambling addiction, therefore you should close them down. Yep. So it depends how obvious this player was. Like if he said in chat, I, I have a gambling problem, I need to stop, and yep. then the VIP manager said, oh, here's Take 10K, a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah, then you can't, can't really get past that one. But if it won in the first court, I can't imagine it's that cut and dry. Yeah, I would say that it's been looked at possibly by people who don't understand the mentality of someone who gambles repeatedly yeah. for fun or even someone who is slightly addicted or but can manage it compared yeah. to someone who is reckless but I, I wonder like if we really want to draw the line somewhere like what is the right what is the actual right way to go about a case like that like say say that the vp manager hmm. he was expressed to that uh, that the player was a gambling addict and um even still he encouraged the the, the player to continue to deposit and to play and give bonuses and so on what is the right way to um, what is the right way legally to go about the court case? Because at the end of the day, the uh, if, you know you you gamble, you can win, you can lose, and so on. Mm. And yeah, if that like if this um, if this uh, period caused mental uh, damage and trauma, um, wouldn't shouldn't the court case be based on that? It should be, but you have the problem is the problem that you have is you have to prove that which yeah. is really hard to do. It's like, prove I'm addicted to drugs right now. You can't. I mean, I hate drugs, but you can't do it. It's <laughs> the, so they have to comb through everything they've ever done and make a decision or an educated decision. And if you read the regulation, regula ugh, regulatory text, like, again, I was talking to you before this about what I do when I'm bored and I have an hour yeah. and a half spare. I once read the entirety of the MGA regulatory requirements. <laughs> This is what Phil does when he goes to the toilet. Yeah, this is what I do in the bathroom. It's either fixed rate mortgage backed securities or the MGA requirements. That's what I do. So the, it says the whole thing says it is up to the operator to provide an enough responsible gambling kind of tools or enough. You have to have a tool, but it can be any tool. You have to have a threshold, but it can be whatever threshold you want. It's super right. vague. So, but the thing That's is, fake. because the regulators can't actually physically write down, apart from what the UKGC are trying to do now, unless they give physical numbers, like you can deposit 1,000 euros, and then you need to do this, this, and this. And then you can deposit up to 75% of your income. That's like the only way you can actually enforce yeah. that happening. It's just so vague. But you would think that um, even if it was clear and there was a breach, and clearly 
the operator have taken advantage of this uh, uh, oh, addicted customer that the fine should come from the regulator and not uh, uh, not a recoup of the losses because uh, imagine you, you know you go to the nightclub and spend uh, like say that I'm, I'm an alcoholic oh, yeah. I go to uh, Dre's in Vegas and spend twenty thousand dollars on a VIP table there that does sound like you <laughs> I've walked through your office there's bottles of champagne just everywhere right, right. <laughs> Well, where do you work? No, it's it's right, but the law, not the law, but generally you will refund deposits because it's it's kind of what you, it's just kind of known as to what you do. Like we have some cases where we're refunding percentages of deposits from four or five years ago because it's easier than going to court and arguing because we know we probably win, but it's a very small amount. It helps them out. We ban them. Problem solved. Yeah. But... Betson didn't do that, so they clearly don't think they've done that much wrong. But if the player is... like, If I'm telling you now I've got a gambling problem and then you let me gamble, then yeah, you should definitely be getting regulatory fines rather right. than and those fines should be fine. much bigger. That, those fines should be much bigger than the losses that, that yeah, you accrue. Yeah, for sure. Because it's a serious on game, so to say, in that case, that maybe you get a fine, maybe you don't. But um, but in, in, in if this comes to light, then the regulator should obviously fine the operator much more than the actual losses yeah. to ensure that it never happens. I mean, we, we have one job as casino owners. I mean, we, we build them, we don't run them, but as, as casino owners, you have a job of providing a fair place to play and ha you have a moral responsibility for your players. That's it. Yes. So if those are the only two real things you have to do yes. and how you maximize the profit from that is by breaking those laws slightly and pushing gambling to people who you think might be having problems, but you know they'll deposit more if you give them a bigger bonus right. or a better VIP structure. So, so here's the question, though, is to kind of take a helicopter view on this issue. We can say with pretty much certainty that the industry committed a lot of sins in the 2010s, the early 2010s, when it comes to uh, treatment of VIP players. Yeah. There wasn't that much education within the organizations, uh, some of them. and. Um, the organization, they, you know, they offer their services and whoever wanted to play could play kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so if the industry is now starting to pay for these old sins uh, in Sweden, in Germany, Austria, um, so on. And, Belgium. Uh, like, um, I mean, it seems like it could be a risk that this could have like pretty like detrimental, pretty huge impact on these legacy operators. I mean, in worst case, you could see the collapse of all major tier one operators yeah. Yeah, yeah. especially publicly listed ones right because uh, this is so much money yeah it's it's it's, it's billions yeah like yeah. multiple billions right so then all you do with that is you drive all of the tier one more safe regulated operators out yes and then what do you have left Right, it's like it's like the reboot of the industry. We are back to like 2002, completely wild west. 20, 25 year cycles. Yeah, 25. Yeah, there you go. Everything, industry. everything works on a 20, 25 year cycle. Everything is in 25 years. Even uh, mortgage backed securities, 25 years. cycles. MBS, but there's a new one now. Different tranches to be done, and then that'll collapse in 10 years. Right, Which probably. One? Oh, it's... We, we, now we go, not, down, now we go down to the rabbit hole. No, we're not doing it. We'll stick with MBS is fine. <laughs> we should start a new podcast, the Phil Pierce on Toilet Talk podcast. Oh, that would that would be a hit. <laughs> oh, we go through some stuff. Yesterday, just before we get off that topic, I was learning about what happens at airports when you check your bags. How does RFID tags work? Where did they go? What happens if it gets lost? How the plane to drive? Oh, it's interesting. <laughs> what, what was like the, the most interesting thing you learned? about how it's low frequency RFID and it can be picked up by a company. All the airports and airlines pay a company to track the bag. So if one gets lost, they use the RFID and then that'll track it to a certain location. So it saves them money on having to refund people for losing 3,500 euros worth of laptops that they never actually owned. <laughs> what was in there? Two pairs of shoes and a coat. Okay. <laughs> and a laptop. Phil Pearson, Toilet Talk. Toilet Talk. Brought to you by Pragmatic solutions. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm allowed to do that one. <laughs> I'm joking. All right. We'll. we'll uh, sponsored by Tim Heath. Sponsored by Tim Heath. Yes. Uh, Phil, we are trying to uh, kind of wrap up the year here. Uh, it's under 2023. It's been a hell of a year, I would say, for the industry, both good and bad. And I want to introduce today the very first annual, hopefully, PPAs, the uh, Phil Pearson <laughs> Awards, ladies and gentlemen, because Phil Pearson here is a big proponent 
and a, a big um, celebrator of uh, great award shows of the industry. I have a really negative view on me sometimes, but I celebrate so much. Celebrate. <laughs> I'm like, oh, well done. No one cares. Yes, uh, but uh, here on the Agamemnon podcast, we care very much, uh, Phil. So, um, so the Phil Pearson Awards. Uh, I saw that you made this post the other day on on LinkedIn, where you did actually host your award uh, show here, and you uh, handed out a couple of prizes. Um, yeah, to a viewership of <laughs> tens of people, <laughs> tens much of like people. Connor's podcast. Much like Connor's, yes, yes, yes. It's growing though. Growing. I know. I, I watched so last time. There's one. That's another one. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so Phil, do you want to? Um, do you want to maybe take the word a little bit and, and, and talk about who are like the worthy winners of the Phil Pearson Awards of 2023? I mean, yeah, but I didn't, we didn't plan this, so I don't remember them. But no, we're going we're gonna to wing it. I mean, one is obvious because I'm sat on it. Yeah. I love this chair, by the way. Yeah, it's incredible. Sponsored yeah. by Pragmatic Play, please give me a chair. <laughs> Might as well. Yes. Um, no, Pragmatic have had a strong year. Like their releases are continuously different. There's not many reskins of games. They have some good new kind of variants of games that they did reskin to make them different, like higher volatility or different kind of levels for casinos. They're very focused on giving players something new to do every few days, but it's not boring. It's quite good. Those and Hacksaw as well. Hacksaw have had a very good year. Their content was dipped a bit and then has come back super strong. And... So yeah, game providers, those two new game providers, have you print studios, they were up for an iGaming Next award. I was hoping yeah. they would win. Yeah, yeah, with um, but the judges were clearly just looking in the wrong direction. Biased, yes. I know. I would have been one if I'd have accepted your offer to do it. <laughs> I was busy, sorry. Um, no, but they print studios is, is actually developing different games with different kind of models and mechanics and mass that you haven't really seen before. So those on the game provider front are people I'm interested in. 2024 for sure especially print because they're quite small they've got 18 games yeah it's a Swedish and, studio right yeah Paul. them and mm -hmm. slot mill are coming up quite fast yeah what, what is it they are doing differently because as we spoke about here just before we started uh, there isn't that much innovation perhaps happening there's not there's like you kind of hit a hit a peak in our gaming is where can you really go but print are kind of re kind of going back to basics and thinking how can we effectively give people a different kind of slot experience with volatility or with kind of repeated wins so the player gets like a longer duration of gameplay but some of their bonus rounds are very very clever like they have a whole one based on have you ever played a tower defense game on your phone where you're protecting you don't seem like the type to play games on your phone though do you just in case anyone doesn't know pierre he's always running somewhere or visiting somewhere or on a beach i don't know <laughs> Strongman uh, no, competitions. No, no, no comments. Swedish male model of the year awards. <laughs> also no comment. Right. So now it's ba you protect. You're basically killing monsters going around a track, just protecting them from getting to the end with archers or whatever goblins. Yeah. I don't know. But they've made a slot out of that, and the more you killed, the better. The bonus would be you'd get more wilds, more right. sticky, more different things. It's more. It puts more kind of a game into the game. It's a bit more, I, I know it's fixed RTP, but it's not like you have any skill in it, but it's kind of fun to see something a bit different. So their games are quite animated, they're quite good, they're not too heavy on your phone, for example, like some of the new Haxels yeah. like crash a new phone quite quickly. Oh. Like Dark Summoning after three bonus buys will kill Google Chrome. You have to restart it. Oh really? It's, yeah, it's just so heavy on the yeah. front end. But their games are just they're just high quality games and pragmatic obviously are, are good at what they do. I saw, I saw also um, like talking about innovation. It's um, uh, G Games are launching like a battle royale slot. Have you seen this? Or? I have not seen that no. story. That is that is on a quite exciting uh, thing. I mean, I'm I'm not in the world to the same extent that you are, but uh, they demoed this to me that it's literally a, a battle royale style. A slot game where you have a character and you play against a hundred other actual players and uh, there's lost man standing essentially a skill game or just like rng it, it, it is it appears to be a skill game so you can choose the power like you can choose whether to attack a specific uh, player or whether to uh, attack uh, multiple players or defend or like mm -hmm. uh, so you have you have options as you go along, go along. but i think um i think uh, it gives you the illusion of skill Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. 
That's quite cool, actually. You, oh, see, you, cool. you see that coming out. It looks look quite uh, quite great, actually. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my phone here at the same time, but I'm uh, I'm bringing up the uh, the PPS uh, yeah, the, PPS, I, the PPA I forgot them all. to uh, to remind you uh, yourself of uh, the uh, different. Uh, so you talked about uh, okay, so up uh, so so provide over the year, pragmatic play. Yeah, congratulations, pragmatic. Well done to you guys. Um, give me a chair. <laughs> give Phil Pierce <laughs> on his chair, please. We are pleading. Uh, up and coming game provider of the year, Print Studios. Good studio. Good studio. Okay, comeback provider of the year. Now you have to remember. Big time gaming. <laughs> you have to remember your own your own awards here. Yes, big time gaming. I think Nick Robinson doesn't like me because I kind of slagged off big time gaming a bit in 2022 because they just they were at the top for a long time, like they were bringing out things and people were queuing to get a look at it like who wants to be a millionaire and stuff like that that was big stuff and then it kind of got a bit dull there was nothing really new it was just kind of boring but now now they've come back with like four or five kind of big hits in a row dating back to like kind of golden catch last year and they are very well received popular popular games that people are playing now with some different stuff they're doing it's good it's nice to see because that was a it was like a game-changing studio for slots that was when they bought out Megaways and they came up with all these kind of high volatility 100,000x max win stuff. Right. Like that changed kind of gambling for a lot of people. A lot of people can hit life-changing sums on 10 cents. Yeah. And they do. And, and, and uh, great to see perhaps the, it seems the evolution has been struggling a little bit on the uh, uh, on the game provider front, uh, this lockdown, but uh, perhaps yeah. this is a, a positive sign for evolution. Uh, we'll wait to see next year when they come out with their RNG stats. Yeah, what is that? Well, not with the stats they have for the slots as to like how they've performed because they were like two percent down last year. Oh, you mean the like um, okay? So on, in the quarterly report, are they, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you're expecting it to be. Uh... I, I'm not on a board. Well, I'm on one board now, but I'm not on any other boards. I don't no. know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but no, their their slot performance, especially Neten, was terrible like because mm -hmm. netent was um from your day you you didn't i gave me longer than i have by a while but their netent was number one yeah, yeah for ages and now it's not even in our top 25 games providers yeah. well it's 26th well it's that far it's that though evo's yeah. two evo's two yeah pragmatic number one mm -hmm. yeah, yeah hacksaw three hacksaw three number four Yggdrasil, still somehow so so you can say let's say interesting yeah, example because they 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 lost their you know, module for quite some time, right? But uh, they have made some new hires. It seems to be a little bit, uh, they're in a comeback you know, yeah, kind of thing. They're trying to revitalize themselves. That's the feeling that I'm getting it's, at least. It's true. It's, no, I was speaking, I mean, this is weird. Cause you, I didn't know if you knew this, but I, they was, I was speaking to their COO yesterday, Jose, great name, terrible American football fan. Um, but we were talking because they're obviously like okay we're coming back we're coming back with these games we want to push we want to do promotions which is every casino's dream because then you can save money on stuff because if someone comes to you repeatedly with promotions you know you're going to make money that you don't have to give to anybody so that is good that as kind of brand as strong as Yggdrasil was from 2017 2018 when their content was probably the best coming out that they're coming back with kind of the the pull that they have and the player loyalty that those games have is really good i think they'll be comeback provider of the year next year we'll put that down already all right i'm confident Exciting. predictions yeah yes I'll it's, it's my prediction oh yeah we're doing a prediction i think or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, gonna yeah. be my prediction all right we, we started we, we saved that for later but and then finally as well so yggdrasil number four and who would be number five uh, with, uh, with you if you I know by heart who is number five on our site so we've got uh playing goal Playing goal is number five. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which that the two through five is interchangeable at any one time. Yeah, it's like a hundred, two hundred k difference, and it changes every month. Pragmatic yeah. is by so. far and away number one. Yeah, and they are accelerating as well as because well. they make the best chairs. Yeah, they make the best chairs. Make yeah, best yeah, chairs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, they're accelerating <laughs> continuously. If Phil Pearson doesn't get the chair after this uh, podcast, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I mean, I, I will drop in some marketing bits for everyone in this podcast. I've decided. <laughs> so yeah, pragmatic play games number one. Number one. <laughs> okay, we move on. Uh, so comeback provider of the year, big time gaming. Congratulations! Yes. Uh, great to see that. Best slot. Stormforge. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you are remember your own prediction. Oh yeah, they owe me a hoodie. Um, no, that game is. I don't. I don't know how many games you play, but that game is 
good content. It's it's got like six different bonus round possibilities. You've got different kind of base game game modes that you can make super volatile by guaranteeing wild reels and every spin and stuff. It's just it's just good. It's a, just a very good or well rounded game. There's nothing bad about it. Right. And that makes a difference. Stormforge number one best lot in the official PPA Phil Pearson awards. Uh, congratulations to Hacksaw Gaming and uh, the people behind that game. Do you remember by heart who you yourself nominated as number two, perhaps? in this post. I don't know, so we I, I've got a choice of two off the top of my head, but I'm guessing I would have gone Zeus versus Hades by Prague. You are absolutely correct. Okay. That's just that's, it's the same game. It's good. It's interesting. It's yeah. volatile without being too crazy as a casino owner to run because the max win isn't insane. Yeah. But it gives the appearance of something super volatile and takes what people want at the moment, which is kind of an opportunity for very high base game wins without needing to buy bonuses or kind of spend ridiculous amounts of money. So for 20 cents, you can win 7,500x, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So here's an interesting award that you included in your PPAs, which is the best crypto casino. You didn't include the best casino, but you did include the best crypto casino. So. It's really hard to do the best <laughs> casino without being biased. Okay, okay. So let's start with the best crypto casino and then perhaps we can include a new award. Ah, um, 500 or yes. CSGO 500. Yes, 500. It's, right. That is down to player loyalty and player kind of just looking after the players. I don't know yeah, what yeah. I wrote. So, so, so considering the, uh, the first subject that we talked about here, um, the, uh, the best crypto casino 500, uh, they have some seriously good player loyalty systems. Oh yeah, it's it's better than the other ones out there. It's rewarding for players to play longer and not higher volatility, so they lose quicker. So it's actually good RG for a crypto casino, which doesn't make that much sense. The um, the RG tools are decent. They do KYC. They do the normal stuff that you're expecting. But it's just the fact that they are there they're on social media. If you message them, they reply immediately. Right. They work with streamers who are real. They don't go down the whole uh, superstar rappers playing for 20 million every week type right. line. And I don't know, I just, it's, there's a feel to the site that also because there isn't those big streamers, there isn't those 20 million a day gambling players that you can actually be rewarded for winning something. So even if you play normal to low stakes, every month you're going to finish on a leaderboard that pays 1k 1.5k even if you haven't deposited 1.5k they're, they're they're very good with how much they give back and how much they try and not spend on affiliate cost it's nice do you want to take a stab at the best online casino as well no it's not not included betson no i'm joking betson. <laughs> i like betson it's a good casino unless you're swedish right now but <laughs> um best online because it's really hard to do Come back to me. I'll think about okay, it. I'll think okay, about it as okay. we go. All right. We'll, we'll see if we get the... I mean, five years ago, I said Kasuma with a shadow of a doubt, but that, that right. changed. Yeah. But it's on a comeback trail right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, good. that's good to see. Yeah, they, they, um, they also uh, like revamped a little bit in the company there and then uh, coming back. The, the founders are back to steer the ship over there and that's I mean, what you need in that that's company. What, that's what made it. That's what made yep. them who that's they are. That's what made Kasuma Kasuma. That's and, absolutely true. And then they went super yeah. the other direction. Yeah, that's it. You have that as one of the um, as one of the um, uh, awards, best redemption. I did. Yes, Kazuma. Oh, there we go. Yeah, congratulations, Kazuma. Love that little guy with his black belt. If you get lucky enough to get it, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> but still, <laughs> okay. Best marketing. Oh, us by a <laughs> long way. Although according to you guys, Soft Swiss, good marketing. No, that was brand. They good, have good best marketing, brand. Yeah, but best market, brand. marketing isn't brand. Yeah. Brand uh, is brand. Yeah, that was the best brand. Yeah, but no, it was the best marketing. They should have won best marketing. So because their marketing is really good, but the, the brand, brand marketing is is fantastic with so Swiss. No, okay, so they do, they do a great job. Actually. No, they do. I mean, yeah. if you're going to put your CEO in a bath full of chilies, yes, or uh, crabs, for that matter, and then, and then with the I, pun, I don't know what he's I mean, got Phil, down there. Phil, you must, you have anyone appreciate the great pun. I do, I do, I do like Sauce. Did, did you see, did you see the crab promotion? Yeah. The Sigma? I was and just, then they said the crab. I'm just jealous, leave crab me alone. Chance. Crab <laughs> a chance, crab a chance, yes. And yeah. they even, they even printed a goddamn crab, crab claws 
and they walked around with them like and they, and they, did, they took photos with the crab claws did you see our video though of people walking around with giant signs yes yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, talk, talk about that campaign you did a guerrilla marketing at sigma i mean she looked a bit like i'm joking i like her she's a nice girl <laughs> um no, we just, we just kind of wrote random things on signs and ran around Sigma just because we didn't want to have a stand because we kind of wanted to keep people, keep our staff from ending up in hospital. So, so you some third third party <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> so you some third party hostesses to yeah. We thought we'll you. just pay someone and right. then they can run around. So like we told um, health, plus health insurance. Health, yeah, exactly. Just wear trainers. Um, no, we told the Italian footballers we were hiring for RG. We told, I think we had like, we are better than various different things, which we changed. And then at the end, we tried to be, I mean, I wasn't sure about this one. And if I'm not sure, <laughs> I didn't know if we should do it. But marketing decided to go with White Label Casinos is better than Soft Swiss and then leave it on the Soft Swiss stand. <laughs> and that's in the video. And I thought, oh. but then I thought they, they have crabs. They're fine. Yeah, they'll exactly. let us away with this yeah. one. They're a they'll, good company. They're huge. Yeah, they know they know they did well. They can they can take. Yeah, we're they, lucky they to be in the same in the same world they're in. So I'm happy to come second. <laughs> it's not a bad place to be second either. It's it's the polite place to be. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> down the down to earth place. <laughs> the, okay, here's uh, like um, maybe um, a bit uh, suboptimal English use of the English English language, but the most profitable award. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you, are you saying that I'm, and, my uh, English is terrible? And, and, and that comes from me. That says a lot. But the, anyway, the profitability the profitable, award, whatever that means. Oh, was this? Yeah, UKGC. Yes. I mean, if if you're going to go after people for going to Turkey and get yourself half a billion pounds to do whatever you want with, yeah, UKGC is in a good place, especially with Sweden now, because that's going to open up maybe the UK because it's a very similar license system in a way. It's very player protected. Yeah. So they could be, they could be Fortune or well, FTSE 100 by the end of the next year. Yeah, there's essentially only three logical acquirers for Antane. It is uh, DraftKings, mm -hmm. MGM, and UKGC. DraftKings is my bet. <laughs> I I reckon they want to move out of just that and get into Europe somehow. I would say it's like UKGC to weaponize their 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 cash. That's one. They should weaponize it, take over it, and then become. I mean, they could just buy their own like city, <laughs> and then just put all of these people in the city and have like a futuristic, like that wall thing or the line <laughs> in Saudi Arabia, that big <laughs> thing. UKGC could just do that in I don't know Hull or somewhere, <laughs> like a really shitty part of the UK. No offense to anyone from Hull, but it's it's not a nice place or Middlesbrough. And just revamp an entire part of the UK with this massive amount of money. <laughs> or, or they should do like, uh, let's say, the, it, now, I, now I missed the, uh, the word in English myself, but the, uh, the Max Scrooge in the, in the Donald Duck. Ah, oh, yeah, Scrooge Max Scrooge. Yes, you should just create this, uh, the safe that is as big as the Empire State Building and put all the money in there. I like it. And then it can be used to I don't know, look after people who have suffered from responsible gambling. It's a nice way to use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyone who no longer works at a company that got fined a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, a few of them. It's <laughs> possibly coming. Okay, this uh, hurts my ego a little bit, but uh, the best show of the industry. Oh, ice. Um, oh no, don't be upset. Yours yeah. is the best show for actually going to learn something. I'll give you that by a long way. All right. I gave me next is it's a great show. It's the Valletta one. I've never been to New York because. Okay. I don't want to, but no, your Valletta show is incredible for actually the content and the panels that you put on, especially now you've got some kind of serious A-list help in putting on the yeah, panels. Yeah, you're, say, you're saying this because you're part of the advisory board that puts together the content film, so yes. I was so sad I couldn't take part in a great <laughs> one that I invented last year. But no, also uh, tickets for our gaming next are available on a Christmas, uh, Christmas discount by 80 euros right now. So if you're looking for that Christmas present for the person you love, I gave me next. Phil said it. You owe me a chair. Yes, Phil said it. I'm taking this chair now. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'd be a great viral marketer, just yeah, throwing yeah. this stuff yeah. into every podcast. If you ever need, a, if this uh, VLC uh, thing doesn't work out, you have a job here yeah. as a promoter. Ne next home, great for pillows. Um, <laughs> no, but ice is a, the, a, a footfall for different people. Ice is always going to be. It's, there isn't really another option for actual selling of your product than ice. I don't think. What would be the number two? SBC Barcelona. SBC is good. 
IGB is also good. Sig the, the only issue I have with Sigma is it's always people that you know from Malta. Right. So we don't really, that doesn't tie in for us as much as it would be for, I don't know, a Swedish company or a right. German company. So like if they're coming here and then they're showcasing something, game providers, it's very good for. But if you're looking for B2B, B2C, anything kind of along the casino product, technical innovation line, ICE, and probably for us, if we look at it on a sales basis, IGB is number two. But it was okay. very close with SBC on the year we did both. Yeah. So this year we're going to do both. So we can judge at the end of 2024, but I don't know. I just, IGB is just very chill. It's a nice vibe to that one. And ICE is just pure flat out work. Right. It's a it's 15 minute meeting. Uh, the, you know, it's, the, I mean, especially eight, on our stand, because we're throwing eight. beanbags at stuff all yeah, day long. It's yeah. never ending. No, yeah. we counted. We had, what was it? 3,000 people play a game in one day last year. And there's only 30,000 people there, so we got 10% of the footfall to our stand because we put beanbags on a wall there. It's kind of like the, uh, the, crash, the, the crash game of ICE, you could say. Simplicity. It's, yeah, but it's people like touching stuff with their hands. Yeah. I mean, that sounds weird. <laughs> but if you go back through all of time, physical gameplay is more invigorating than virtual gameplay. Like, people play... PlayStation games, but when we watch TV, not many people are watching esports. Most people are watching oh. football. You want to play board games? Yeah, you want to play something. You, yeah, you don't. Want, you don't play Monopoly on the PS5. You oh. play Monopoly and then you, well, if you're Debbie, you throw the board at someone when you start losing. <laughs> True story. <laughs> then you go to the bathroom and for one and a half hours. One and a half hours, just calm down, <laughs> learn about something else. Um, yeah, so it's the the reality of having a game that simple. Other people should copy this. I'd be fine if they did, but having it realistically in your hands the the queue for that is massive like it's just free marketing and it costs what 8k to build it and you see like what's it novomatic spent what two and a bit million on their stand but people go and they sit at the games but there's no one there there's no kind of interaction with anybody like on prague the prague people are so busy and they have that massive bar like they work but yes. they have people just wandering around playing a game and then they'll walk off so we try and keep it more focused on actually speaking to people. So when someone's throwing a beanbag, you can actually talk to them. Yeah. And then people cheat and put on disguises and come back and try again because they really want to win a trip. How much, um, so say a, a conference like ICE, you have these 15 minute meetings, yeah. 15 meetings per day, 45 meetings in a, in a conference. And we take 20 people, so. And you have 20 yeah. people taking all these meetings. Um, how 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 much value do you feel these meetings actually uh, bring to the business? Like if you compare, say, this just your own tactic. Uh, mm. uh, if you think about what is generating actual business, is it as many 15 minute 15 minute meetings as possible, or is it um, trying to reform deeper relationship by hanging out for a longer time at a more relaxed conference? And you can perhaps yeah. create more friendships and so on. Like, like, do you analyze this? Because when you when you do the conference, you will everyone is always open to business when you mm. speak to them at conference because everyone is just business friendly. But when I come back, and maybe this is my own like early onset al Alzheimer or whatever, but I don't remember that many meetings that I had, and I rely very much on my notes. So I will go back to the office the next uh, the week after, and I'll go through all my notes, and I'll have one note for every meeting and I'll and then I'll remind myself of what we talked about. But I'm there selling as well. So I would imagine the people that I'm selling to, they are not necessarily going to take notes and they're not necessarily going to remember what no, we talked about. 90% of them don't remember. Right. And then you have to remind them. No, yeah. I, I'm on the belief, I think I wrote about this quite a bit. I did like a whole thing about um, having no meetings booked for ICE. Because if you're booking a meeting for ICE, like the amount of game providers we have that are in Malta that say, oh, we'll catch up at ICE. I'm like, right. oh, no, right. fuck off, come to our office now. Right. You're down the road. <laughs> it's like, so a lot of account managers, a lot of BDMs, a lot of salespeople want to fill their diary to look busy yes. instead of doing what they should be doing and just walking around, finding people, having people come to them. Like I have, I will not set up a single meeting for ICE unless it's something that I think, okay, that might be worth it. Like someone's like, okay, I want to open five casinos and I want this, this, and this. I'd be like, interesting. Right. Then I'll clear an hour because you want to talk to them. But generally, 15-minute meetings at ICE are fine. We can learn something. We'll get a couple of new game providers out of it, a new payment provider or something. But on the sales side, I, just, I would say just try and be as free as possible 
because the people that you want to sell to are not people that you already know because otherwise you'd have sold to them. It's just random strangers that are just getting into the industry, big affiliates that want to look at having their own casino or whatever in your case you're selling. Yeah. What are you selling? What are we selling? What are you selling? Ourselves. Ah, oh, yes. yeah. Yes. Time. <laughs> Time. I yes. like it. Yes. <laughs> but um, I'm thinking more and more when it comes to like these extremely busy shows like like Eyes and mm. uh, Sigma and uh, SBC Barcelona and this bigger. But um, this like are these 15 minute meetings in person worth more than having that same meeting on Zoom or Skype? when it's not that hectic? I would say no, it's about the same, but it's getting to find them is the key. So you spend the money to find the people yeah. and then so you, you exhibit, convert. Yeah, you exhibit more for people to find you? We exhibit like? for exposure is the only right. reason. Like we will, we will get a few, probably like 10 to 12, 15 very decent leads and then we'll whittle that down to ones that we actually want to work with. Yeah, but when you find those leads, do you find them before the conference or during the conference? During the conference. Yeah. So these are these are individuals that come to your standards, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. So if, if that's we could the, find that's them better. before, then we wouldn't exhibit. We just no. pretend to exhibit and just hang around the forum online all day and just be like, yeah, we're there. <laughs> so, exactly. So so that that's where the value is essentially. That's, the, uh, the value yeah, is it's just a, it's a finding branding, strangers. Branding exercise and people come to you during the the uh, ex exhibition that you don't un that you didn't expect to meet essentially. Exactly. That's why Sigma for us is not as helpful as others because everyone can, well most people here kind of know us through some form like podcasts or yeah. crazy ass marketing it's one of the two so yeah but going to the uk and meeting people from countries that we didn't even think we would have any kind of capture from is is the key to it right that's the the only reason why for me ice is the best show because you get people who are like oh yeah i'll go to london like everyone wants to go to london and then hopefully in 2025 everyone wants to go to barcelona yeah. again but probably less so. Yeah. Do you, do you measure your success like uh, from from the various conferences? Like, do you measure ROI? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. And do you measure? Do, do you is that, does that come from when you actually sign a contract? Where did that lead originate from? Yes. Yeah. That's that how you measure. or kind of metrics based on uh, PSP payments or game providers. Game providers not so much because we can find them anyway, but payment providers are a big one because yeah. some of them are quite hard to find. So getting that at ICE is, is helpful, but ICE is the biggest one for ROI for us by quite a bit. By quite a bit, yeah. And yeah. then it's... They just have the variety of that uh, kind of like non-legacy and like the, the the part of the industry that you otherwise wouldn't meet. Let's yeah. say. That is the uh, the, entry, uh, the entryway, like when you're just entering the industry, ICE is the first show that you go to and then everything else is uh, second, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Okay, moving on here. So the... Um, the last awards of the PPAs is perhaps the most exciting one, the most prestigious one. The uh, induction of Hall of Fame to the Phil Pearson uh, Hall of Fame. I don't remember that one. <laughs> you don't remember? It is, it's a legend of the industry. It's a, it's a, it's a woman. It's a British woman. Oh, Denise. Denise. Yes, there you go. Founder of Bet365. Bet365 Bet Car Park Denise. Yeah. That woman's done amazing things for everybody. I mean, if, you, if you've if you read that, you know the history of Bet365, obviously, kind of. In, in what regard? In the fact that they came from a family bookmakers. She ran out of oh. a car park in Stoke, and now they own the football club. They own half the town. Oh, they own Stoke. They, own, they literally own the whole of Stoke. I mean, the only famous person from Stoke, apart from Denise, is Robbie Williams. And you can... That's not bad. I know, but you can kind of keep him going off just ketamine at this point, so <laughs> he's fine. Um, and it's like what she does, she pays tax on everything. She's not tax evading in the Cayman Islands. She paid, what, $150 million in tax? Yeah, it's like second biggest taxpayer in the UK. Yeah, that's like... In what, the entire UK. That's what the UKGC earns in a week. That's right. a lot of money. That's like, you can't even imagine the amount of money. That I know, that's just a lot of money. But then she gives to charity. She has foundations. She's like... I mean, a little bit, it's like when J.K. Rowling was big before she became problematic for people because of her views. But <laughs> she was kind of giving money away left, right and center because Harry Potter made it more money than is possibly to be printed. But those two, especially for women doing it, it's like feminism and kind of women in whatever industry they want to be in. It's, it's a good thing. It's a very good thing, especially because they're doing it the right way. Whereas if you would look at 
a lot of men in the industry, they find a way to circumnavigate the rules, which I don't agree with. I do agree we should pay tax. If you earn money in the country, you should help sustain the country. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good baseline as well. Okay, actually, we missed one um, uh, award, and this is definitely the most important award. Uh, this one that you got. Year. This is not in the uh, in the Phil Pearson uh, LinkedIn Post uh, awards. This oh. is a new award. This is the hamper of the year. <laughs> the hamper of the year. The hamper of the year. This is the most prestigious possible award that you can get. A lot of hampers flying left, right, and center at the moment. Christmas hamper of the year is a big award. Christmas hamper of the year. There's delivery people that are busy 24 7 right now delivering these hampers all, always but it can only be one winner one. it can only can. be one winner who's your winner though okay I, i'll start from my side i have a clear winner actually the winner from my side uh -huh. is uh, altenar they gave yeah. out the most incredible pieces of chocolate that i've ever put in my mouth that's a big statement that is a big statement yeah I looked up these boxes of chocolates because I, I saw them myself when I ate this. This is not normal chocolate. There's something, there's something extra to this. And um, these are small boxes uh, that that cost a hundred euro to uh, to purchase. Like small small boxes of like luxury chocolate. Where are they from? Uh, from Switzerland or something. From the, the chocolate river in Switzerland. You know. It's not a it's place a... called Z Z chocolate or Z chocolate. Yeah, Z chocolate. Yeah, there you go. I work with them. What? Yeah, I I introduced them to them. Oh no my way. God. Yeah, Phil, Phil, you are responsible I'm for responsible for Altenar's, Altenar's success. They might the argue Hamper this, Award. but you have my LinkedIn. If you go Busy. back all four roads, years... All roads goes back to Phil Pearson. This one does. All roads go back. I, even, I can't claim even, credit even. for a few things. <laughs> Vikings Unleashed Reloaded from yes. Blueprint, which I told them about. Yeah. A new game, which I've done, and Z Chocolate. And, and Defiance in Netherlands. Yes, <laughs> which okay, we can that's maybe thing. talk about a little bit. <laughs> that's what I, that's but no, Z Chocolate, I found them and then I got all of our clients. It's like a wooden box. So you basically got, they, they screwed you in a small version here, but you can get a 128 piece sliding yeah. wooden box carved beautifully with finest, oh, so good. And they're all different numbers and stuff. Oh my god, I feel I feel like I ate this and, and like three people died making this box of chocolates. That's how I felt. That is generally this. how they make them. It's the death yeah. of child labour. That is what they're yeah. using. Yeah. Just small French children. Yes, <laughs> yeah. thousands of hours. Yeah, it's overpopulated in France. They needed it. Um, but no, the, the people there, we work with them every year. We're doing it ourselves, but for Valentine's Day, because everyone does Christmas. Why not do Valentine's Day was our idea. <laughs> so make our clients think we hate them. Yeah. And then make them think we love them on the right time of year. Uh, exactly. Hmm. It's like a comeback there. Yeah, but no, Zed Chocolate, I, I introduced them to gaming five, four, five years ago. Incredible. On LinkedIn. Yeah. And I pro I think I would have told their old CCO about it. With his name, I can't remember. Did you get some chocolates from this, at least? I get free chocolates from them every year. Yeah. They send me 200, 200 chocolates to our office every Christmas. It's, it's a blessing and a curse at the same time. I spent 20k with and, them. And, and you don't send these chocolates onwards? Do you keep them? This why you don't send Give them, them to the hampers. staff. Right. I think staff and you only have, deserve Christmas. And, and how many staff do you have? 155. Okay, so 155 boxes and then 45 boxes for Phil. No, 45 boxes generally get stolen by other people. I don't really like super fancy chocolate because I don't like praline and that kind of annoys me because I really want to. But they, what they do, and this is, I'm going to give a big promotion to said chocolate because it's the best chocolate in the world. <laughs> and then they make me a box every year of 15 non-praline white chocolate fondants. And they send them to me with my name on in a separate post that only goes to me so they know they won't get stolen. That's how good they are. <laughs> That's how good they will look after you. And I think if you buy some at the moment, you get double the chocolate for free. Oh, well, double the chocolate. Yeah. So the, you pay for a Jesus box, Christ. which is like, say, 300 euros, but they will double the amount of chocolate you should have got. Oh, my and God. Said, See, we're just marketing for everybody today. That is an enormous amount of chocolate. We're going to have to send this podcast yeah. to them. Yeah. yeah think of the free chocolates you'll get if you pick them up. It's going to be a chocolate shortage in Switzerland. Can we not get a picture of chocolate <laughs> on the chocolate. screen? <laughs> Endorsed by Phil Pearson. Endorsed in the logo. and brought to you by Pragmatic Solutions. Yes. Okay, Phil. So this is so Altenar. They Altenar. have my hamper of the year uh, based on That's your nice... incredible recommendation a couple of years ago. Five Phil Pearson, now back to you. PPA Awards, the final one, the big one, the, the hamper of the year. We haven't got that many. So the problem we had is we moved address and not many people have followed us 
So we, a lot of our stuff has gone to our old address, to our old company. <laughs> so they basically had most of it. Um, we did get a very nice thing from microgaming of 24 fine wines from around the world, which now, as it was left open in the office, is now 17 fine wines from around the world, which we also have been cooking with. So we've got a chef in the office who's having some fun with wine at the moment. <laughs> She's probably drunk and making it up. Uh, that was a nice gift. Uh, we also had one of our clients actually sent a nice gift box. It wasn't, it didn't have the best stuff in it, but it looked good. All right. The two That's floors awesome. down from you in this building. Good, good presentation. Good presentation. I love good presentation. Yes. Uh, but no, the best one for me, it was last year because I don't think I've seen it this year, but a client of ours called iGaming Analytics. Think data, but fast track levels of data is the best way I can describe it. It's like okay. data mining and stuff. They sent us a chocolate box, but it was different chocolates and things made out of chocolate it wasn't like a like a thing of chocolates it was there was like a chocolate father christmas but made out of pure white belgian something that was really good and there was chocolate powder for hot cocoa and stuff like that that was a nice one fantastic I love, I love things differently yes yes uh, we, we are spoiled we are spoiled here in this industry and yeah. the, pro the problem for me though is i ask all the game providers and everyone for gifts for raffles so then when it comes to sending out hampers i think i go to the bottom of their list because they've already gave me a lot of stuff i have an idea for for you guys if you want to include a, a nice gift for next year yeah what do we get what are we buying you so i think considering the me marketing that uh, you guys are excellent for i mm. think that you should create a, a water brand that is called unfiltered as in fill unfiltered and it's basically brown water uh, nice. with the brand unfiltered and you send that to your clients but then do we put it safe to drink or does it make them physically sick like i tend to make people sick? oh no it's a it's a decorative uh, oh, it's a decorative brown yes, water it's a decorative okay. it's a it's an art art product like the I, banana on the wall kind of thing my marketing idea is my marketing team is probably loving that right now yeah so yeah free idea Depends how much it costs. <laughs> if it's like Coke, when they launch Dasani, it's going to cost billions and we're not going to sell any. I like it. It's good. There you go. Free idea. Uh, okay. So that, that was exciting. The Phil Pearson Awards. Uh, we got to make this uh, into a yearly reoccurring thing, I'm hoping. Someone should do like an awards, but put it into a show. You know, invite yes. people and give things away. That's a great idea. Yeah. Like trophies. Why hasn't that been done? Maybe people could pay to come buy an award. Think how much money you make. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to brainstorm that. Yeah, so it's a work in, work in progress. Moving over though, um, Phil, so we, we've given a lot of award and a lot of praise uh, here today, but is there perhaps any, is there perhaps any companies or individuals or ideas or games that should go in the Hall of Shame box of the year of 2023? I've been, I've been trying to avoid calling anyone out in 2023. So this is a great time to do it. Yeah, it's a great. Uh, I thought, okay, maybe CEO now probably shouldn't be as argumentative as it was two or three years ago. <laughs> um, I mean, companies like, I mean, people to call out, I mean, regulators in general, that's yes. always the first one with me. It's like, just work together and fix a problem before it becomes a problem. Because it's like with the circle of 20, 25 years, all they're going to do is just send us all back to 2001 where everyone is offshore, like on Tabik or some random island, Anjouan, not Curacao. Of course, I was getting good now, but that's that's going to cycle around again. Um, who else is on the bad list? I mean, can we, I'm guessing you want to talk about Entain at some point. <laughs> You've said it. You yeah. said it, Phil. I didn't say I know that. where you're going. I can see a glint in your <laughs> eyes. Like, I want him to mention Entain. That's not gone well for them. <laughs> I feel I feel bad for the compliance and finance teams. For the um, for the private jet. Uh, no, just for the never-ending M and A they've had to do. Right. It's like think about how much due diligence goes into that. To buy a company worth seven hundred million, you have to check everything for the past twenty years, and they've had to do that eleven times. Yeah. That's took evolution. What like two years to buy No Limit City? Entame would have done it in six weeks probably. Yeah. Masters of M&A. Yeah, yeah, they've learned 30 years. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the share price has bounced back a bit, though. It has, yeah. Yeah, I mean, after uh, after the uh, departure of uh, the CEO and then newly reinstated. Uh, I wonder how she got home. Yeah, it's, it's 
it was probably not the, the most exciting trip home, I would imagine. I doubt, I doubt it was as frivolous it as it's been used to. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that's that's the thing I don't get about CEOs. Like you see a lot of CEOs. I mean, I am one, I guess, but I'm not. Well, you too. But I'm, I, I'm M&D. So the sorry. same thing. You have the, you have the bombastic tattoo you have, that, you that have, I don't have. I'm you sorry. Have, you're pretty much the same thing. But we, I, I can't ever see a world where I feel like I'm important enough to get somewhere 45 minutes faster when I can do the exact same amount of work in a lounge at an airport and then on a plane with 200 other people. The only thing it helps is speed, but it's, it's what, five, ten times the cost minimum? I had a look at a price. I was curious because I read this. So bathroom time. <laughs> I was researching <laughs> private jet companies and how they operate and how they work. There is a shared private jet company in the U.S., which is actually getting some good traction. <laughs> which is only 50% more than a decent seat on a like Delta, but you can go private. I thought right. that was nice. This, this became really popular during COVID, especially like yeah. private private flight really took off at that time. Yeah. That's why the prices are coming down because there's so yeah. many of them now not doing anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the average cost is 11 times more. So am I 11 times more important to save what 40, 40 to 50 minutes for my company? <laughs> no, <laughs> in a nice way. <laughs> I can fly in the evening. That's on my time. I don't get that. I don't get why any like private jets for a company like Microgaming had one to get all the staff between three locations, yeah. and the plane just flew a route between Malta, Isle of Man, and London, and that was it. They didn't go anywhere else. It just basically gave people because they were constantly moving around. Right. And that that was a good investment because that was for everyone. Right. This is just like if you're a single individual and you are having a nickname for doing that stuff, that's not a great look. No. Especially when you're not known for paying the biggest salaries to some of your employees, but you're spending... I mean, that's that's just not going to pay itself. Yeah. It's not going to pay itself, my friend. Especially if you get a nickname. If you get a nickname for something, it's not, not never good. <laughs> like unfiltered. Un no, that one's fine. That's what I made that. We made that one. So, <laughs> so it's when someone else <laughs> you makes made a nickname. Yeah, yeah. When you gave yourself a nickname. Then, uh, yeah, I gave myself a nickname. Even, even better. Amazing <laughs> Phil. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, love it. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So that one, Antane, I, I would say Antane in general hasn't had the best year, perhaps. No, I don't know if it's going to get worse or better for them because, again, the big they're fine as well, Turkey. Massive yeah. fine. What, 600 million euros. Yeah. Or all the sins like we and now they're to discuss about. now they're recruiting. It's fun, yeah. But there's what who who did a piece? You did a piece. I gave me next did a piece about the odds of the next CEO of Entain. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did that one. But uh, who did we? You do did so we? many. You're like, yeah, of course we did. Yeah. I've got no <laughs> idea. I, I don't write the articles myself. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but yes, we did that. I'm trying to remember who who was at the top of the. Uh, I, I don't suppose we put the. the uh, Bridget Simmons, like the head of the UKGC on top of there. No, but that's who, yeah. that would have been a good choice. That would be a good choice. Uh, you had the guy who tried to buy, had, do a coup at 888. Right. Whose name, the, I don't know. Yeah. Um, the lady they have now, the interim. Yeah. She was 8 to 1, I think. I said I should have been 200 to 1. But the, yeah, yeah, I think I'm exactly. fun with that. It's like a, it's like in the um, in the political betting. There should always be a dark horse on the uh, on the. I will the throw box, myself you know? into the ring as a dark horse. I won't yeah. take it, yeah. but I think it would be a laugh to be involved yeah. in that process. Yeah, like throwing Matt Damon there or something, uh, you know. It's would not be the that hard horse. a job because what you're doing. Jeff you... Bezos. Yeah, Jeff Bezos. Yes. Jeff Bezos' Be ex-wife. Oh, no, that that could be fun. Yeah, she could invest her own money and pay the fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that wouldn't even. Not even a like, dent. She has she has so much money that she could. She could fund the the fines going into the UKGC for two and a half weeks. That's how much money she has. <laughs> that is that woman is in a good Loaded. place then. Load of UKGC really needs some stock options. <laughs> <sighs> no, she'd be fun. But no, it's it's not a bad job to take. I mean, you've just got to restructure. That's all the job is now, because yeah. they've got you've just got to work out profitability of different companies, put the right people in charge of different ones and separate out your internal teams a little bit more. Yeah. Like right. that's it. There's yeah. not that much else to do. And then your individual teams will work on those smaller companies within the big company. Right. It's not the, 
it's, it's not a podcast if, unless we talk about um, some evolution in uh, in uh, our it's, sphere. Of I don't think I've ever this met you and not discussed evolution. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I was talking to Todd at iGaming is, Idol, and he was like, this... "I love Peter." I'm like, "I know you too." <laughs> <laughs> it's literally on your business cards. <laughs> I, lo- I love. Uh, yeah, I can't I love pronounce evolution. his surname, yes. but I love Pierre. It's definitely there. <laughs> All right. So, on that note, evolution, pragmatic. You know, in, in these couple of years, Pragmatics has gone from being kind of the up and comer to the dominant player. Hmm. Where does evolution go from here in this landscape, really and truly? And what is what is your prediction now going forward? So Evo. Silence. Science. <laughs> Silence. Silence. Um, no words. No, um, I mean, Prague's easier to explain because they are continuously growing evo is a bit all over the place but they're such a well-respected company that you know they're gonna they're gonna do something but they're kind of tied into kind of being the main provider of live casino for probably forever because it is it is the name that you want like yeah prague have it stake logic have it other people have it but it's not as well played prague is growing but it's not going to be on Evo level for probably eight to 10 years minimum. It's not that much time though, if we really think about it, eight mm, to 10 years. Yeah, but in eight to 10 years, is gaming still going to be the same place? Right. A lot of things have changed on the, at that point. So. Today. Yeah. Right. Like if yeah, today yeah. happens again, this will be known as what? Black Thursday? You, no, so we've, we've like had that. a Black Friday because that was the yeah. poker thing. Yeah, that was poker. So Black, th- Black Thursday. I would need a different, terrible Thursday. Yes. Terrifying Thursday. T- t- terrible Thursday. Terrible, terrible Thursday. Thursday. If that yeah. happens again, then we get yeah, another Thursday. one. Yes. Then the whole dynamic for game providers is going to have to change to being, are they comfortable with more offshore traffic? Because I, I know we shouldn't go into too much detail on this because it's probably like lawsuits everywhere, but your options now are super regulated or crypto slash gray in a nice way. So if the regulations pushes pushes people out of taking the risk of getting a 500 million fine or 500 million in having to refund players, less people are going to go down the regulated route. You're going to have more and more players play on offshore. And then what your game providers are going to have to take that traffic to stay relevant or to stay in business. So if 30% of the market moves from regulated to unregulated, especially when you take what like Kindred's trying to do with 99% regulated markets by 2024. Yes. That's this year now, pretty much. Yeah. So if their risk of fines is that big, <coughs> are they are they really going to be in that place that they thought they would be? Is the profitability still there? Is the market still there? I, th- I think gray is going to grow. Play, the, 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 yeah. That's, I guess that's the over, over, overhanging prediction. But I mean, from evolution point of view, or any game provider for that matter, the players are still going to play, whether they play in the regulated environment or unregulated mm. uh, environment. And um, game suppliers will be will be uh, catering to both of those sides, right? Most of them. Some of them are avoiding, like a few of them are avoiding Kanawaki KGC now. Some of them are yeah. saying no to the new offshore Curacao variants like Anjuan they're saying actual no to these they're saying no but then there's workarounds so there's people with multiple companies holding different licenses a whole thing yeah and then that's a legal way for the game providers to say no we're fine we only deal with this so that's the way they're going to probably be looking at it but is it going to affect i mean evolution is big and they take such a large percentage of the market i don't see them having problems what i want from evo is just i want todd to go deep into his you know, mind cavern or whatever he has in there of genius ideas and come up with something better than crazy time. Because funky time was, yeah, all right. But it's just a disco dance from this board. That wasn't, yeah, not many people play it, but crazy time was genius. Right. Lightning Roulette was genius, which we spoke about. But I'm, I'm waiting for the next huge Evo staple. Right. That it, 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 be it, uh... this year. It happened in you know 2018, 2019, yeah. 2020. Yeah. 
but uh, for one or two years, uh, there hasn't been that big hit from Evolution, essentially. You nothing, nothing since. I mean, Crazy Time was good, but they, they pushed Funky Time a lot. But the, the stayability of the game wasn't really there. Right. But they need so they. I don't think they need it, but it's good for everyone if they have a, a world-beating game out there. Do, do they need to kind of go back to scratch and start over, like? Uh... And uh, when it, uh, as in when they come up with the next big hit, uh, Funky Time is obviously very inspired by Crazy Time. Do they need to go back to scratch and and uh, come up with a game that is its own title, just like Crazy Time was when it came? Yeah, I mean, if the, if the next game is I don't know, like Dance Time or something, then yeah, then we know that they're kind of running low. Pierre Time, <laughs> that would be a good game. NFT Time. Yeah, NFT time. That's what you play, and then by the end of the game round, it's worth 10% what it was when you started. Um, FTX time, and it's worth nothing. Um, yeah, I, th I think they're going to go and look at, because everything they've done recently is Lightning versions of classic games. They've got Lightning Baccarat, Lightning Money Tree Baccarat, which is just the whole exact same thing. But Lightning Blackjack was weird, it's it's done okay, but it's not done great. They have extreme lightning roulette, which is just crazy volatile. But I think they're going to go back and come up with something new because this year was what crazy pachinko, the slot turned pachinko game that they took from Crazy Time. That that's done well. The number of bets is quite high, but the average bet size is quite low. Same for Crazy Coin Flip. So I think they're probably going to sit down. I reckon Todd's going to come out with. 80% likely something massive, 20% something yeah. which he will even say himself, because he's pretty honest yeah. with it. He will say, no, that was a bit shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he recognizes himself when, he's, know, he's quite, when the, the thinking makes sense, yeah. but actually it didn't turn out he's, to be. He's quite a nice person as well, which is really annoying, because I really want him to be a dick. <laughs> I, think, I think that would suit him so well, but he's not. He's actually quite nice. <laughs> Which Todd, makes me sad. Th th yes, Todd is uh, exactly the same person on stage as he is in, in his fairy life. Yeah, and uh, he keeps that energy twenty four seven. Yeah, uh, in a in an incredibly weird way. I, uh, I don't know he's, how he he's a unique person, right? It's there's he no is, one like Todd. There is no one I've ever met like uh, Todd. Not even close. I've met someone as kind of, I want to say flamboyant. Is that a good word? Like extravagant in a way, because he's quite out there. Yeah. But I've met someone a bit like him, but I mean, this is no comparison to all, but that was a semi-famous drag artist. <laughs> is the only person I can think of a similar level of stage presence, yeah. confidence. But uh, Todd has like a, um, a, a, a weird, like macho energy. Oh, he does. That is also on this flamboyant level. Yeah, it's, so it's he's, he's, very uh, good. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very unique energy that he has. I mean, it's worked for him. Yeah, and out of that came Crazy Time. I imagine that uh, the Crazy Time is what this looks like inside Todd's head. I reckon that's Todd's daily that's Todd's routine. Screen. It yeah. just spins in his head, and then he picks what he's going to do next. Yeah, he's like bathroom. No, no, <laughs> I'm going to the bank. But then, how shall I get to the bank? I will dance to the bank. I can imagine him doing that. I know when it's been a couple of days and, and showering has not shown up on the wheel. No, he always smells good. To be fair. <laughs> fair enough. Any other, would you say, okay, there is not any other perhaps, but um, no, actually, let's stay on the evolution because I have one more question there. Um, live, obviously, evolution is dominant, mm. have always been, this is the, uh, the, the, the status of Evo. But uh, on the slot side, the um, question has always been since the uh, acquisition of NetEnt, uh, will they be able to succeed at some point in RNG? And uh, there isn't much so far that have... Uh, that have shown that uh, they are able to kind of turn this negative trend. Uh, do you think there is any potential way for them to uh, to turn this trend around? Do you see them going head to head with Prague on the RNG side at some point? I th I think they're going to need to. I mean, no offense to the people there, but I think they need some fresh ideas on this one because big time gaming. Leave that to one side because they're generally in innovative already. So that is one of the smaller pieces of the bigger puzzle but big time gaming i think will be okay because 2023 was good 2024 looks good uh nick is still involved so that man's on a todd level of creativity right less flamboyant 
more, but still, but more the, local pub vibe, but yeah. like a good, like a fancy local pub. Yeah. Like a craft beer guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Like That's him. Century, yeah. I, I put people in positions in my head. It's quite weird. <laughs> um, and then, so what? Red Tag. Red Tag has not been good for a long time, though. So that one's kind of dropped right off. And Netent's been... Netent's gone from game-changing stuff to, what, I said 26th on our list of 25. So, yeah, I think they'd need to definitely do some kind of relaunch, re planning of whatever they have coming out but they they did that already though they stopped for a while to say no we need to make this better and that didn't work so i think they need i think they need some fresh ideas let's talk about playing go for a little bit i um, like playing go right we, we just uh, in in the time of this recording we just uh, uh, released the podcast with magnus olson the cco at uh, playing go and um, very nice guy we, we made a quite interesting discovery here we, we're going to report on this as well and we talked about this in the podcast magnus was open about it but Playing Go have just signed the headline partnership for Haas ah, Formula One team. He told me a week ago. Exclusive. Right. Exclusive, exclusive. And so we got curious and we started thinking, how much does a headline Formula One partnership cost? And now we're not talking about um, you know McLaren or like one of the top teams like the. the oh no, Haas is, Haas is shit. But let's they put, do. But, put that out there. It's the worst team on the on the, the grid. <laughs> so so fair enough. Uh, but still, how much does a headline partnership cost? And we are, we are talking now, I mean, a general headline partnership for Formula One, any team that is not on the top team. 40 mil? 50 to 100 million euro for it. Now we're talking like a five-year partnership yeah. right here, right? So um, 10 between million, 10 yeah. to 20 million euro per year. Uh, and so presumably, this is what Playing Go is paying as a B2B company, right? They are not targeting the mass market uh, with this branding. They are targeting B2B. And so let's draw a little bit of a comparison here. Playing Go decides that it's time to uh, it's, it's it's time to start investing in marketing. Yeah, it's finally time. So <laughs> where do we go? It's finally time. We have two options: either we purchase the entire floor plan of ICE, which would be probably between fifteen to twenty million euro. Yeah. The entire floor plan. We own the entire ICE. Uh, or probably we get IGB as well thrown in. And, and throw, throwing in IDB just for the cost of it. Yeah. Or you take the uh, the headline partnership for Haas, uh, the, the the team there. However, they do have Gunther Steiner, who is this uh, cool cool guy. In, oh. uh, in, uh, and, and, um, he's the Todd of F1. <laughs> he's the Todd of F1. That's, uh, that's absolutely true. Um, and I just thought that was a quite interesting comparison just to bring some perspective in how massive this investment uh, presumably is for, uh, for playing Go. Um, it's big. It's I find it interesting. Big. Yeah, I found it really, really interesting. Yeah, I, and I was very surprised when he told me. Yeah, it's flexing the muscles, you know, because uh, I also asked uh, Magnus, uh, you know, how do you justify this uh, uh, this investment? And for them, it's a lot about the hospitality. You know, they have access mm -hmm. to all the races. They can take clients to every single race and uh, yeah, ready for a take them down to the pits. You know, uh, <laughs> I've already bagged one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are trying to convince them to do a, to let us do a blog in one of the one of the races as well. As um, an advisory board member, possibly. <laughs> would love to be. That would be a pretty cool thing. We do a do a do a blog. Yeah, because we don't get yes. paid. Yeah. Just give you all my genius ideas for nothing. Yeah, 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 I yeah, get yeah. a coke out of it. It's not too there we bad. Go. There we go. No, it's it was a very weird. Like Stake did it for Alpha, <laughs> and I kind Stake of thought, is B to C. It's B to C, but I thought also. How, how do you get around advertising responsibility on that one? But now it's kick.com for this year. So yep. they've merged into the whole streaming platform. Um, but it's Play and Go is it's a strange one because unless you gamble, you're not going to know who Play and Go are. And if you Google them, you're just going to go to the website and then you don't know where to play them. So it's play for free. I don't quite see the benefit of how they get a return from it. But if they are looking at it as hospitality, it is a, it's a great thing to do because Formula One's never been bigger. Right. Plus, it's probably about the same price as what you'd pay for a suite in Vegas when it's F1 time in Vegas. So it might not be that bad a deal. It'd be about 50 million. About 15 so. million. Yeah. Courtside, <laughs> trackside, yeah. courtside. Or, you know what you could do for 50 million otherwise? You could book out half, no, one quarter of the tickets to a Taylor Swift concert. You could or pay 3% of Entain's KGC fine. Uh, UKGC fine. I <laughs> know oh, Taylor Swift can't. Oh, that would be worth it. It would uh, fund the UKGC for 23 hours. <laughs> 23 hours of funding for the most well-funded 
five person company in the world. <laughs> no, t- imagine having like the first 30,000 th- 30, seats of a Taylor Swift concert, not letting anyone else there and just lying down. Right. And have her just sing at you. Yeah. That would be an experience. Money can't, well, money could buy it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to have to buy those tickets off the Swifties. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's going to be the difficult part, I guess. Oh, they are crazy. Yeah. As you know. Yeah, I got my ticket, but I got mine through someone I know who works at Wembley. Uh, so, yeah, it was easier to do it that way because right. they helped me out with NFL tickets. And then I said, by the way, do you do anything with Taylor Swift? Because I know two people that really want to go. Me, obviously, being both of them. And then, <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, what, 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 did you call it? what do you call yourself as a Taylor Swift fan, the Swifties? They're called the Swifties. The yeah. Swifties, yeah, of course. But they're, mo- they're moving into NFL now because she's dating Travis Kelsey, the tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. So right. their Kansas City Chiefs ticket price went up by almost double for the next home game because Taylor Swift was there and all of the girls who like Taylor Swift were buying tickets just to go and see her in a window. That was it. She wasn't <laughs> even going to sing. Game. It was just in a window. I'm looking forward to hear the song after they break up. Oh, it's going to be a good song. Yes. <laughs> so we calculated it's it. It's going to be called Touchdown. Touch. For sure. <laughs> Hail Mary. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, 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 nice. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Hail Mary. It was, it was always going to be a Hail Mary. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we calculated this before the podcast. Uh, here, the mathematical the mathematical geniuses that we are, me and Phil. That's um, <laughs> what we do. Yes. Uh, not even on the toilet. No. Uh, but actual, actual, actual work. Actual work. So uh, Taylor Swift, uh, in, in my family lives, uh, part of my family lives in California where Taylor Swift is peaking right now, right? And, and um, prices in California for anything is, is completely skyrocketing. <laughs> a ticket, like the cheapest ticket for a Taylor Swift concert in California is around $1,000. And SoFi has, what, 100,000 seats? And 100,000 seats. So. 100 million. A hundred million for the cheapest tickets, but we we uh, we estimated right the uh, say the average price then would be around two thousand dollars if you take into mm-hmm. account all the suites and the uh, VIP tickets and pit tickets yep. and so on. Uh, so we are talking two hundred million dollars per show. Yep. Taylor Swift. Bingo, bango, bango. Taylor Swift gets what two percent, three percent of that normally. Yeah. Because you've got to pay for a lot. Yeah. But we she's should... a nice person though. If you read, she's like nice she tips person. all of her drivers a hundred k. On top of their wages in yeah. cash, for for every kind of set of shows they do. I feel that if we create a boy band, feel that we would be even nicer. Who we need five people though, so we need to find three okay, other okay. people. Okay, they are the um, the i gaming boy band. Yeah, it would be me, band. me, you, Phil. They would I be think David t- David Mann would be a good shout because he and David this Mann. is a true story. I know three people who have all said to me on separate occasion, David Mann has the best ass in i gaming. That's something you need. You definitely need that. We could just have him backwards in the poster. It's a great. We can sexualize David Mann. I think. I think would be. I think he'd be okay with that. It's a great asset. His wife might not be. Yes. Great, it's a good asset. Great asset. You need a fifth one. Well, uh, yeah. So with Todd, obviously, he's the lead singer. He's the. He is the. Um, he's the lead. He's the lead person. Have you seen Love Actually? Love Actually. Uh, the movie. I don't think so. No, then. Okay. Well, that it, reference isn't going to go anywhere. Okay, okay. He's like the Bruce Springsteen of the band. I'm going to say. Okay. Like, Queen's Freddie Mercury yes. at the beginning. That's Todd Hudson's today of evolution. Yeah, essentially. Yes, I like it. Person number five, who's gonna be? I have a, I have, I have a, I have a, I have a great voice. Yeah, who's that? It's uh, Ivan Filetti of Gaming Malta. He is an opera singer. Is he? Yes. Are and we... he's been, he's been Ivan, and I'm not even. I'm. This is no joke, here, Phil. Ivan Filetti has been lobbying to create an iGaming band. I'm not even joking. He's been lobbying to put together an iGaming band for the last five years so that uh, so that uh, Ivan can sing opera at the iGaming Idol Awards. But there was one. Uh, oh, the guy's name, I can't remember. He used to work at NetEnt and then went to Green Jade. Not Jesper, the one underneath. Oh, I was going to say Jesper, yeah. He would be a good frontman as well, to be fair. <laughs> yes, he, yes, his, would be great. his shirt's never on. <laughs> yeah, I've seen like, him host a podcast with like six buttons undone. <laughs> I like, okay. I feel I feel like Jesper would be the he would be the promoter. Mm, well, that's true. Yes. No, Ivan's a good chat. We can do cross between rock opera. Yeah. Yeah. So we go again. We go Bohemian Rhapsody. Kind of uh, we go full circle with our with our boy band. Yeah, I feel just, it's going to be a unique twist to that. I think that'd be pretty good. Yeah. yeah I can good. borderline play the piano. If you give me enough time, I don't, I don't I'll feel like I want to hear that. No, I can. I, I could give me a week. I could probably remember again. I'll play the triangle. No, you seem like the drummer. 
You, you've got uh, the hair. Uh, we let the hair down. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like the triangle is my instrument. Okay. That's what the music teacher used to tell me. So she, right. she used to tell me I'm, I'm the best triangle player ever. Swedish man. Stay, stay in the triangle. She told me you're the best triangle player ever. Aren't you Swedish? Yeah. Therefore, you must have at least won or come second in Eurovision in your life by now. So you must be not that bad. That's all you guys do. Just win Eurovision, <laughs> go home. And then everyone hates us. Yeah. No, everyone loves you for Eurovision. Yeah. Everyone likes going to Sweden. It's pretty. <laughs> Stockholm is the nicest city. Stockholm is the nicest city when you have a really nice day. And in Sweden, we have a saying that uh, summer is the best day of the year. Hmm. But that one day. I was there. The it was amazing. Went on a boat, sailed out through the islands. Oh, hmm. Like, you can't paint that in your head. It's super nice. <laughs> Love it. One, one day, Phil. We'll, I gaming uh, ball band. We'll perform yeah. in Stockholm. We'll perform there. In yeah. that little square where the horses are. Yes. Uh, so, so I get, sorry, we, we'll, uh, we'll perform in front of tons of people. Tens of people. Yes. Connor can promote us. He can do the <laughs> opening. <laughs> just slag, roast, off, yeah. slag off Sweden. Hey, roast. Norway. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Connor's so funny. Okay, so yeah, you talked about the uh, kick earlier. You mentioned kick. Yeah, that's uh, they are taking over the Formula One uh, team here, and um, yeah. that's another big point of the year, isn't it? Uh, kick versus Twitch. What's your I mean, kick, kick is great Twitch. That's basically what it is. Great Twitch. Yeah, I mean, there's all the streamers from Twitch who accidentally dropped items of clothing at the key times or, I don't know, went to kick. The, the story last year, there was a guy who was literally being given, I don't know what the politically correct way of saying, the woman was performing acts upon him while he was streaming. Didn't even get banned. You could just see her head move up and down. That's all I'm going to say. That didn't get a ban. <laughs> so if that's going on, yeah. But no, kicks in kicks in trouble right now. Well, they're about to be, I think. Do you think so? Yeah, they've they've got a section of the site that um, broadcasts Disney movies and watch along movies, like breaking every copyright law known to man and kind of. Uh, but yeah, it's it's there. You just type in other. Yeah, and it goes other watch along and then you, you there was why i had a look um the other day i was like jesus that's actually real i thought it was fake but there was like frozen 2 there was james bond movies and it's just it, I, th I think if they get looked into for that they it's going to get in some trouble i mean obviously i've said that now on a podcast <laughs> so yeah, sorry but it's that's yeah twitch is a lot more secure and safer but kick is obviously better for the streamers because they give them more money right but yeah. that's kind of the stake logic Stake logic. Stake lo yeah. stake logic. Yeah. Oh, my oh my god! god. You like, like explode every pun today. That was fantastic. I didn't yeah, even mean that one. Stake logic. That's the logic of stake. Is <laughs> obviously reward people more and get more viewers, more customers. Right, and and that's the point. As you point out, that's the point of of uh, kick where the streamers retain most of the tips that they get. I think, yeah. yeah. Whereas on whereas on Twitch is more like a fifty fifty type thing. Fifty fifty up to seventy thirty now. Yep, they opted so, on Twitch as well. Yeah, it depends how if you're a Twitch partner affiliate or something like that. Right. How many views you get on average? Yeah. What was your prediction if uh, when we come back in a year here, do you think uh, that uh, there's a potential risk of a downfall on, of of Kick? Probably not. Probably not. I mean, I, I mean, Amazon owns Twitch. Yeah. It's it's a lot more serious for them. I mean, Kick's owned by three shell companies, owned by one company in Australia, which are owned by the owners of Stake. So, I mean, yeah, good luck. Good luck, yeah. <laughs> I think they can kind of just get away with it. But it, no, I think I think they might shut that down, I think, if they have some sense, because if it goes global, then like, if the FBI does it, because the copyright affects American companies, they can block that URL, like in like the UIGEA of poker. Like, they can stop that from being used, and that would not be good for them. Oh, well, when the hammer comes down. Well, they're like the only people that can actually wield the ban hammer. Yeah. And... It works for poker. Yep. So, if, but they don't often do it. They've only done it for that and what Silk Road type stuff. Yep. It's like when the um, when the hammer comes down, but there needs to be some political will behind these things. You know, <laughs> the the, uh, the 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 backdrop of Yuega when that happened and uh, poker uh, poker's downfall in the US was very much down to uh, the political will behind that. Yeah. Right. It was so much in the in in it was so much in the face of the um, the consumer and um, on the back of the fact that uh, Sheldon Addison and the land-based casino segment rallied against the online 
uh, gambling world uh, in general managed to uh, kind of uh, scramble together the political will that then became Eurega. Mm. I, I was I was actually playing poker not for a job, but I was sponsored at that point by Paradise Poker. With um, Ultimate Poker, Paradise Poker, those guys. Yeah, ult- Ultimate. And did you have a super? Did you have a super user account? No, I wish I did. <laughs> but I beat Vicky Corin. Oh, classic. Happy. I love Vicky Corin. She's yeah, a legend. Um, Pro player, UK. Yeah, so I was sponsored to play there for six months. Wasn't and, very long. And and when when you when you got sponsored back in the day, what did you get then? You, you basically good rate back deal. No, you get all your tournament buy-ins paid for. All right. And you're on kind of a profit deal where you just keep a large percentage of the profit, like eighty percent, I think it was, give or take. The only problem was I won one huge event for, I won their quarterly event for like sixty-eight thousand dollars, and then missed or lost every single event for the fourteen afterwards. <laughs> so it's like really good, and then like yeah. oh, okay, what, what, what it was first, second, and then almost last for the next yeah. one. Were you, were you part then of of the? Uh... Of the uh, ultimate bet poker scandal. This is like no classic poker. I was around when history. it was there. I know how it was done, yeah. but it was that was huge news. Yeah, like that, that was, was like... that changed a that lot changed, yeah. about how poker sites are regulated. I would say. Yeah, because having an account that can see everyone's cards. cards, but then having someone stupid enough play a tournament. To win every single hand. Yeah, and calling though, like there was this like hands where it was queen eight. You, he had queen high. Yeah, even not even it was like you have eight high or something, and you mm. call down this like huge pot and then do it again and do it again. They just lost their. It was yeah, and everyone was like, "Hang on a second. Yeah, something is definitely wrong here. Yeah, it's like it's like Robbie Jade with a check four. <laughs> yeah, J four. I believe she cheated. I know you she don't, did. but I yeah. think she did. You you think she cheated? I I reckon yes. 100%. So, so uh, not to confuse the listeners too much here, but uh, Robbie Jade Liu is uh, a female poker player in the US that played this high stake uh, cash game where she was in a pot against a professional poker player and um, a very good professional a, a, poker player. A very, very strong professional poker player who bluffed her on the turn and, um, and, uh, and uh, went all in against, against Robbie Jade Liu. Robbie called. The all in, not bluff, but like re bluffs, but she called the all in with Jack High on a very dangerous board. Which loses to every bluff the guy yeah. has, apart from the only one single hand he has, which yes. is 7 8 suit. Which was a straight draw. And a flush draw. A flush draw that actually she called with the Jack High, but she it was still only a coin flip to win the yeah, hand. 50 50. So she called Jack High in a massive pot, like 100k plus uh, dollar jack high and still only have 50% uh, uh, chance of winning. And she ended up, of course, winning the hand, uh, then got massively accused for cheating. Gave the money back. Uh, gave the money back that, uh, that same night. Uh, and then this blew up, right? And it became a huge, huge, huge thing. Yeah, and then what, two weeks later, a guy who works there was fired for because he could see the whole cards as it was being played. And he took yeah. chips off her stack. Yeah, he. And he, then he no, was yeah. fired. So they. No, what happened was they did a. They did an investigation. So obviously uh, this became a really big thing, and the production did an investigation. Because usually when you play a TV table, they will screen you to make sure that you don't have any oh, like microphones we, or anything. We like played this. one at um, Portomaso for yeah. let's, the casino grounds game. Yeah. There was MGA there. There yep. was screens around the corner. You got microphone. You got checked. Yes. And they live checked every five or ten minutes to make sure everything was in order. It's pro- right. properly done. And now we're talking Malta. Right? And that, that, that's Malta, which is <laughs> that's Malta. One of the most famous countries for checking things are properly done in the world. <laughs> Have you seen our so, roads? <laughs> so that aside, uh, so Robbie. So, so essentially, this employee, when they did this big investigation to to try to figure out if there had been any wrongdoing and so on. They discovered that one of them please stole chips from Robbie, basically, mm-hmm. That's, and then he got fired from only that, Robbie. Only Robbie, I, I believe so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only and Robbie, so they so. followed each other on Twitter and Instagram until they it got bought up, and then they magically unfollowed each other. And then yeah. she said, "I've never heard of this guy before." Yeah, yeah, something like that. It was like so, so like clear. And, and the thing also why people thought she was cheating was because I, I think it was like when she called and. Um, 
Do you remember the the guy's name? Is it Gary? Gary Adelstein. Gary, Gary Adelstein. Yeah. He 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 goes like, "Why did you call?" And uh, and he's like shocked, right? And and she said something like, "I thought you were bluffing or something yeah. like that." Yeah. Um. And then, but then later on, she said that she misread the hand. Yeah. So there was like two conflicting things that she was saying. Well, there basically. was there was three at one point. She said she misread the hand. She said she thought he was bluffing, and then she said, "Even if you have ace high, you still have life cards." Yeah, and yeah I'm so like, those are three things. In what world is that logic? Yeah. It's like, ah, okay, I have a 12, 17% chance of winning, and I'm getting way less right. than the required odds from the pot. Yeah. But, uh -huh, okay. but, but here's, here's the thing. So, like, I'm not that conspiratorial, but... Are you interviewed her? And she was here. She was yeah. in the studio, right? She came here, and, and we talked about it, and... and uh, you know the, the the interesting and she's very she's a very interesting character super sweet and very nice and so on but all that aside i think if you are cheating in that moment and you know that gary has seven eight suited you have to call you wouldn't call that no you have to because you it's 50 50 to win yeah but the now, amount in the middle yes but now the rational fairly speaking because you will know, like if you're sitting there and you are going to call, you know that you're going to be scrutinized. Oh, but then you say you misread the hand straight away. So, you went, oh so, shit, I thought I had a three. <laughs> then that, you're like, oh no. No, but you know, but, and then you're nervous with all of these cameras and all these things. There. So you know you know that you're going to be scrutinized because that's just, that's just what's going to happen when you call with Jack High. But when she you didn't, call she didn't know what he had, is what I'm thinking. Because if yeah. she just gets told that she's ahead or not, that's the only thing she knows, she might just think, okay, I've got to call because I'm ahead. Like she's not going to know what that means because she's not that good at poker in a nice way. Yeah, like if you see yeah. how she plays any other hand, yeah. my God, yeah, she's, she would she's, get owned. She's she's a loose poker player and then like she likes to play very aggressive and and, and other things. She's, and a, she's life, not scared, yeah. a lifetime large losing poker player, of which course, if yes. you're playing those games is quite difficult because you normally have to beat worse people to move up to that yeah. level. But that's also why she gets invited to the TV tables, because they want exciting players that create action. As well. And in a, in a very sexist, but not from my opinion kind of way, they like breasts. <laughs> and, uh, and she's not afraid of that. <laughs> she's not afraid of that. So, yeah, it's it's a whole... It's but I would say, I would say, say like, like, it's a... Yeah, it's a... I I I am on I'm on a team uh, Robbie and Jay Elliot. I don't I don't think there's a way that she cheated. There's just too many things that doesn't make sense for her to cheat there. Like first of all, why would she choose that moment? Like that doesn't make any sense. Like there's so many other. She didn't know. There's there's so many other oh, there's so many other times where she can where she could cheat and actually get away with it. Um, there's a there's a couple where she folded some and and, and she gave hands. the money back. So like if she knew that she cheated, like why why would she give the money back? Like I think she, I think it was just like a combination of all the craziness and, and like be like like it's a, you're a bit nervous. There's adrenaline there and then uh, oh fuck it, I called kind of thing and uh, and I, then and then and then all these other things happen at the same time. Like I mean, in a nice she doesn't seem like the I'm gonna say the most naturally intelligent tool in the box. She's sweet and nice, but she knows some stuff, but she doesn't seem to be the best kind of player of that type of game on like a dark intelligence level. She seems like she'd just go with whatever she thought with at the time. Yeah. And I think maybe she thought, oh, if I give the money back, no one will say anything, no one will investigate it. And then just as it went on, it's claimed she's lie detectors, but I've never seen any proof yeah. of any of that. Yeah, she did a lie detector test. Uh... Did she now? Did she? Yeah, at least that's the. It's like that's well, the they found Mike Possel not guilty of cheating, and that was the most obvious cheating in the history of all time. <laughs> that was. If you've seen that one. What is that? Mike Possel. Mike Possel. Yeah, oh you, my God! I haven't. How have you missed out on this? There was like 17 streams in a row where he was making perfect decisions, and mm -hmm. I mean the flop was Queen 10 8, Queen 10 7. And he bet someone else raised. He looked down at his lap like this for five minutes, folded top two pair to a single raise <laughs> against pocket eights. Yeah, right. And it was just, it's like every decision was perfect. Calling three bets pre-flop and then folding yes. on a king high flop because someone had quads or uh, someone had trips or a straight or something. It's like every decision was perfect. flawless. Yeah. And it turns out he was best friends with the guy running the stream, but they couldn't kind of get it through court because the court can't prove flawless poker play as illegal they see it as very good poker play even though mathematically you are folding ace king on king seven three i'd say zero percent of the time yeah isn't this it so some other court cases of um 
you need to players uh, cheating on the uh, cheating the casino when they play slot game and they figure out mm. uh, they figure out how to beat the slot game. The, the casino usually wins those court cases because yeah, mathematically, game mechanics, yeah. because mathematically, it's impossible over that many rounds to uh, earn money. Yeah, they they find any loophole, but it doesn't kind of work the other way around. So players against the player, yeah. just, just poker doesn't yeah, work. Doesn't work yeah. Yeah. The courts always stay away from poker cases, though, because yeah, yeah. like, what could you really do? But you really should look at Mike Postle because if you get him on an interview for somehow, yeah. that would be super famous. That would be interesting. Yeah. Seriously, that would be the big one. That's two years yeah. ago, three years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, really can do it. Okay, so Phil, big topic here. So as we are reviewing the year, um, hmm. early in the year, I think perhaps the podcast, the two podcasts that I've done this year that have gotten by far the most uh, feedback and comments is, first one was uh, the one that we did uh, last time. It, it gets uh, re- referenced to all the time. And uh, secondly, a uh, podcast I did with uh, Alexander Tomek uh, a, a couple of uh, months ago, six months ago. That's the weirdest um, thing I've ever watched in my life. Where we talk, we posted a really funny video at Agami Idols that, was uh, good. that uh, highlighted that podcast. And um, in that podcast, Alex talks about uh, the use of psychedelics as a treatment for gambling addiction. And once, he did more than that, I will say. Yeah, I yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. <laughs> also ang- his personal experiences. And I'm, I'm angling this uh, in a, a good angle. way. And um, when this podcast was released, uh, you know, there was um, a couple of comments on, on social media around that particular topic, whereas one of them were, uh, were was Phil, it was you, right, who came out very really strongly against the uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, very anti-drugs, yes. generally. Yes, yes, yes. So I want to, of course, ask uh, you, Phil, um, yeah, do, do, do you think uh, psychedelics, uh, for example, LSD or mushrooms, MDMA, uh, can help treat uh, gambling addiction? I mean, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I mean, you were I, I, in, I, in social media, you were. I, I, no, I'm, I'm morally against it. But that's morally. I could be morally against penguins if I want to be. Yep. But I'm not. I love penguins. So <laughs> it's it's more like is in an untested, unsafe place? Probably. Yes, very against it. If there's some kind of study and MIT or what is it, any medical university or pick whichever one you want john hopkins big one they are doing a test in psychedelics against problem gamblers just go to sweden now pick anyone queuing up outside a courtroom right. take them to america <laughs> and just say we're gonna we're gonna test this theory see if you want to gamble after it i'm, I'm down with tests of that nature if it's safe right. but i don't think sexualizing slash trivializing it is good for anyone but that's morally, and I'm generally morally not always correct. So I'm happy to be wrong and let okay. people do whatever. Okay. But I don't know. I just I just don't see it as. I mean, first of all, that conversation was the weirdest five or ten minutes of podcast history I think ever has been created <laughs> outside of Joe Rogan ever. It was good. We should get uh, Phil and Alexander together in a debate. I think. Uh, that would be tricky because we have very different speech styles. I say whatever comes to mind immediately, and he is very slow, methodical, <laughs> thought out. It's, yeah. We'll I, see. He needs a coffee. If we give him two or three shots of espresso beforehand, I think that could be fun. Okay. Speed up the... Speed up Tomic. I think that would be fun. <laughs> in, in virtual reality, perhaps we can put you guys in, in um, Alexander oh. Tomic's old school uh, VR casinos. I love it. I mean, yes. what happened to that Facebook thing? Meta? No. Meta? What was it called where you had VR and then you went into this weird space? It didn't work. No. It died, but we yeah. could do it in one of those. We could yeah. build our own, like, roller coaster based podcast studio. Yes. Yes. And every time you ask a question, it just starts going up or down, depending <laughs> on the answers. What about LSD? <laughs> <laughs> Straight on. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. We, 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 got, we got to make it work at some point. But I, I, I needed to get that comment out, uh, out of you to, to clarify the, the thoughts. So that was very good. Uh, so we are uh, nearing the end here a little bit. But we have um, two more points I want to, uh, to bring up um, here. First and foremost, another big thing of the year was uh, we talked a lot about regulation today. Uh, Netherlands, the... Um, KSA have been active uh, this year as well. Another just a little uh, bit. Another competitor to the UKGC, um, filling the coffers uh, in that uh, respect. So I want to ask you. Um, of course, uh, uh, white label casinos were part of the um, 
uh, companies that got fined um, together with video slots earlier in the year. Yeah. Uh, and um, video slots uh, particularly were very vocal against the fine that they got and they had kind of put the um, stake in the ground and said, we're going to take this to European court and we refuse to pay this fine. We haven't heard that much since then. And it's been a little bit quiet on, on that front externally, but um, from what you can say, what is the yeah. kind of current I, status I need, there? I What's need to happened? legally say there's only so much I'm allowed to say on this matter right. legally okay. without prejudice, okay. allegedly. Okay. Whatever words you want to put in there. Yeah. The, so disclaimer. Disclaimer. the Dutch regulator is doing this without really looking into what they're trying to do. So they, I mean, I can use us and video slots as an example. They, for us, for example, we are now in the stage of, we've gone through various hearings with them. Uh, they've announced a primary judgment, but now they keep delaying the secondary judgment. They keep delaying saying, we need more time to go over the information that you've given us. So what we've given them is proof of IP blocks, proof of player accounts being suspended, proof of being able to not access the sites in their country, to which they said, but you can access the site in their country. Here's one of the accounts that we used. So we looked at this account and it was registered in Luxembourg as the country code. So we said, that's not the Netherlands. And they said, yes, but we can, we can try and get around your system. And I went, so hang on, so you use a mobile phone a brand new mobile phone with a IP connection that doesn't even register in Cloudflare, meaning it doesn't register as an actual country. You put down your country as a fake country that you're not in or nowhere near. The IP shows you as a non-registered IP. How are we possibly meant to know you're from the Netherlands at this point? I say, if you walk up to me on the street, I mean, if you walked up to me, I'd have a guess you were Scandinavian. <laughs> but this is a random person saying, hi, my name's Pierre. I'm going to guess you're French. That's just a step in the dark. <laughs> this is a person called, I think they just their name was Hector or something. They just made this account and deposited 10 euros. And they went, okay, this means we can play from the Netherlands. So then they went to work out the fine. And the way they worked it out was they took every click our sites had got from SimilarWeb. They worked out using an online tool. And they came up with the number of, that amounts to revenue of 300 million euros. <laughs> Each click was worth 220 euros. <laughs> and I was like, hang on. So if I just go and click on my own site to check something, that's 220 euros worth of value. I was like, how much do you think players are playing? So I worked out for them and I actually sent them an email with a breakdown that the actual cost per click is 0 0.0013 cents. I was like, that's, that's the actual profit that we would get off this player. So if you want to find us, your actual amount that you should be looking at finding is, is about 18K. And they went, no. And we went, okay, so go do your things. So then they presented all the stuff. We argued it back, and now they are reviewing it and have delayed it three times to give themselves more time. Right. So it's still an ongoing case here. It's an ongoing case with an expected summary judgment at the end of January. Are there any precedents here, really? Or, or is this kind of like, this is the precedent this, of this, this happening? This will right be one of the precedents. So if we manage to win this, I may retire due to fame and massive fortune That's and go and consult. The saviour of the arguing industry, essentially. Yeah, the, the, the poor Dutch people. <laughs> no, but the Netherlands is such like a generally, a really, I mean, if you think about it, it's very relaxed. Think about red light district, weed, gambling, IGB, biking on the main roads, living on canals. They do whatever the hell they want. They're all six foot seven and really good at speed skating somehow. <laughs> but then it comes to this and they're like, no. We are going to focus on this and we are going to make a gambling regulation. But then the day before we publish it, the politicians are going to take over and just change it completely and do whatever they want. So everyone was just put off by that. Right. So if this if this wins and they manage to actually fine us based on an expected income of 300 million, when I don't think in a nice way, if that's what I was making, I would be sat here. I mean, KSA, for God's sake, look, look at the, look, look at the jacket Phil is wearing. Is this, it, is this, is this, this a jacket is not of a 300 million jacket? <laughs> this is a jacket of a, of a man that is uh, running we a 300 million jacket. We are drinking Coke and Powerade here, people. <laughs> Coke with sugar, for God's sake. I need the sugar. <laughs> yeah, you and your zero calorie Powerade. There, there, there you go. <laughs> That's why you run. No, it's, it's, um, it's very different. And <laughs> they are, they have this opinion, which is up to them legally to have what opinion they want. We will argue it and then we will argue it as far as we need to argue it. But we are, 
I think four or five weeks away from having that hopefully finalized in a good way. And then I will consult for whoever wants me to for free. We'll give any money to Cherry yeah. and hold me to that. But it's, it's just, it's crazy. Like the amount of calls crazy. we've had with lawyers. There was nine lawyers on a call at one time. We had four, they had four. If you think about how much that call is costing yeah. on billables right. every five minutes to both of us. The lawyers are the well, happiest people in the world. Huh? Yeah, I mean, these were Dutch lawyers as well, so they were probably pretty happy already. Yeah. Smoking yeah. before the <laughs> thing. They're like, yeah, man. Psychedelics. Yeah, they're, they're on LSD and just pure weed at that point. <laughs> and that's, a, that's how they came up with the fund. Yeah, they just they just thought, mm, how much should we go? And one guy said, 300 million. <laughs> yeah. That's about right. And they just went, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll pretend they made 300 million. <laughs> like 300 million is what? The, the net worth of... UK, UK GC, uh, one, one month of fines. Minimum. But I mean, a big company, so like what? Just any big company. It's like 300 million is a lot. 300 million is a lot, yeah. So that, that's like half of Betson, I think. Half of Betson, that's like, what? 20% of Next.io? <laughs> yeah, I wish. 5% of Tim Heath. <laughs> <laughs> Love Tim Heath. Our Lord and Savior. Well, it's, it's what? It's what? Fourteen percent of evolution, ish? No, it's less. I don't know what no, Evo, Evo, is Evo, at, Evo, Evo is like. Evo is like twenty billion. Oh, that, like, yeah, I, I took so off a zero. 10, okay, ten percent. Yeah. So one percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we shouldn't compare. The, the only comparison to evolution market cap is the UKGC monthly fines. Or pragmatic, if they ever go public. <laughs> right. Mm. Well, stake.com maybe if they go public. Yeah, but that's impossible. So yeah, one point five percent of evolution is what we make. Yeah. In just the Netherlands. Yeah. Apparently. In just in the Netherlands. Yeah, and just off with no marketing, no advertising, not even accepting players. Yeah. We make one point five percent of Evo from the Netherlands <laughs> with having a country block on all of the players from signing up. Oh, which we God. don't even need to do legally. We yeah. just have to say no and just remove it from the registration form. Because yeah. if the players bypass that, that's that's their fault. They're choosing to bypass these terms. Right. And then we can just close the accounts. But no, we actually went to the stage of IP blocking. Hmm. So we've spent money on that. Right, right. Hmm. So let's see what uh, happens there in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it could be that um, we'll, we'll a get a, 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 a big shipment of sad chocolates, either uh, eating to celebrate or eating uh, to con uh, console. Let's send see it, what happens. Send it me to a Dutch prison somewhere and I'll just right, receive it. Right. I, I reckon Dutch prison would be nice, though. Yeah, I have a feeling too. Like that, this would be pretty. Like Norwegian pretty prison. prison. Yeah, exactly. It's outside, you have a PlayStation. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you might. Really the live. suicide rate's quite high, but apart from that, you'd be having a great time. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's a doctor. Yeah. They speak well. Uh, that's what you think. <laughs> I have nothing to report. I could learn speed skating finally. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, so, you know, a point that we forgot to, to bring up here today, Phil, is, uh, of course, uh, you know, today we are rounding up the year 2023, but we haven't talked a bit about 2024, but general 2024 predictions uh, outside of what we've talked about today. Is there anything that comes to mind, perhaps? Ooh, on the spot. I, well, I mean, today's you know, news changes this quite right. dramatically. Right. So, I mean, we could go high risk prediction. Someone tier one falls apart properly closes shop like right? closes shop or stripped down and sold all right that's, that's a big prediction, that's a big prediction. That's that a big is prediction. but that is very dependent on the supreme court sweep yeah so if the supreme court finds for that player i could imagine a preemptive sale or closing down of someone who is extremely liable under that verdict and that precedent right uh, DraftKings will buy someone. That's a good prediction. Or start to buy someone. Either way, Kinder, they'll be maybe. I think, Kinder, I, I think Kinder is a really good prediction with that actually. They are propping up a sale now, uh, Kinder. They are they are lowering their expenses. But but that, mm. but this is also the thing, you know, whoever DraftKings chooses to buy is on the backdrop of what we are talking about right now, which oh, yeah, is they're going to be liable for potentially massive fines that are in the background here for past sins, right? And, and this is what happened with Pokestars, right? After mm. they got in, uh, acquired by Flutter, huge fines uh, they had to pay for, That's why they sold for breaching so the US. And, and that was part of the, um, 
part of the uh, the deal, I believe as well, that uh, this fine was in the background there, so it it affected the share price. I th- I think that I mean Pokesas was a good buy either way because the fines and the money they had to pay it was what nowhere near as big as what we're talking about here. It was it was big money, but it was big money for poker compared to the bigger deal yeah. that Flutter is. But if we look at just I mean DraftKings manages to have a good share price even with losing. What was it lost like one point something billion in a year? Yeah. They can afford a fine. <laughs> so if they're going to come in for someone and go to majorly expand, then yeah, I'd imagine they would they wouldn't have too much of an issue with a possible fine if they can work that into the risk management. But then you would want to look at um, you would maybe want to look at uh, organizations that are perhaps that doesn't have the same risk profile of generating these unexpected huge fines because they can come at any time at but any size. Because that only leaves you with yeah. the grayer. Like the grayer is, uh, I mean, take us, we're, like, we're in the middle. But White Label Casinos? Yeah, we're in the middle. There we go. Yeah. You have the... If DraftKings wants to buy us, I mean, if, they, if, if Mr. Robbins wants to send me... I'll call him Mr. Robbins. If he wants to send me a message, <laughs> I'll have a chat. Um, no, but I mean, what we do is different. But I will say without breaking any NDA, there is a tier one-ish operator who is looking, I mean, they spoke to us, who is looking at diversifying their market from regulated to including some offshore, mm. but on the side, so separate companies. It feels so like it's, most it's, tier ones already have some elements of a... A lot have those. some elements, but if you're looking to actively do it with your same team, that's different. Right. But again some some of it's quite dark that we don't get into but some of it's like if you look at even mga license that's considered kind of gray now which is crazy because five years ago it was a shining light of europe right but now all the local regulation is going to change potentially everything yeah so we could be sat here next year with 99 percent of gambling traffic being on crypto sites right and it feels like this is this is where the trends are heading i mean the uh... I would short some markets right now. Right. I would I would big short as the you know, wonderful podcast editor said before we came in. Right. Big short time. This could be Two the time. Because you just see. This is where movie. This is where movie books. movie lines are being made right now. Exactly. Yeah. We could make the prediction. Could, it starts with Bradley Phil Cooper on the tar- <laughs> and <laughs> playing playing Phil Ryan Reynolds. Yes. And it starts. The first scene is Phil Pearson. Uh, uh, yeah. Ray Re- 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 Reynolds sitting on the toilet. Thinking, Just reading, looking at MBS, going, yeah. okay, stumbling box, yeah. and then converting that into eye gaming. Yeah, like because we've had a couple. And, it, a and this couple is the of... first. This is the first thirty minutes of the movie is uh, yeah. Phil Pearson sitting on the toilet thinking, That's, and then and then a, from nowhere, boom. That'd be an art house movie for sure. The idea strikes. It's not much of an idea. It's more of a realization of like for every big crash, like in the late nineteen eighties, two thousand and eight, two thousand and twelve. Whenever you want to look at it. There's always a precursor, something that happens, something big that changes something, and then something falls off. Like housing markets in the US is easy to see because it just went from 4% to 8%. It was just literally nearly overnight because yep. everyone was getting mortgages from anywhere for no costs. The gambling thing is similar. Like we're looking at a potential multi billion dollar refund to players yep. from companies who. I mean, if if you look at Entain, spend their money lavishly right. on flying people wherever they want to go. <laughs> Just going to Tahiti. See you later. Um, uh, the, the cost of acquisition, the actual profitability of an actual casino is not as high as it used to be. Your affiliate costs are higher, your payment costs are higher, your game provider costs are about the same, but your staffing costs are higher, cost of living is higher, yeah. cost of offices, cost of gas and electric. Your utility bills in the UK are probably double what they were two years ago the actual cost of a company is is high enough so that people are pulling out of markets yeah germany uk uh people left netherlands they've actually just left so with all of that adding together these fines could cripple the big companies or enough big companies to make the game providers hurt then if the game providers hurt your share price hurts for evo so if that goes down, people lose their jobs, and then it's just a nightmare cycle. Yeah. It's it's like it feels like there's um, 
there's a big reallocation of capital that's taking place mm. in the industry from the traditional tier one monsters of the industry and in general the the the, the classic uh, uh, operators from the past uh, and Old the reallocation the reallocation into the new kind of re-emerging industry and just look at you know you walk through sigma mm. who have who has the biggest stance in sigma yeah right it's the new this it's the new school the new era supplier new school new era operator new operators new crypto new i mean look at stake.com sponsored alpha romeo before anyone even thought about it they can afford that the money going into crypto and gray market now is is huge yep. i mean even if they do the job correctly even if you kyc everyone follow all the laws don't go into germany don't go into sweden then the, the money's huge yeah but all it takes is for the people in the countries that are wanting to gamble and can't like the uk with a new white paper that's really limiting on players because they can deposit what 250 pounds before they have to do a full check yeah. People can't be bothered with that. They can deposit 20k on stake in five minutes. Yeah. It's that will change a lot if the big the big operators have to go down a route that the offshore doesn't. Yeah. Because that will just own the market for a very long time. Yeah. I um, wonder if we'll see some of the traditional the traditional tier one operators or tier two operators switching strategy, perhaps. Say Betson, for example. <sighs> Betson go full on crypto. Say, <laughs> Say so Pontus Lindvall, they say, I, screw this, we are not going to uh, operate with the Swedish license anymore. It's not worth it because due to the heavy fines that we're risking. It's starting. So they, they exit the market and um, Malta will protect Betson from having to pay the fines that are imposed on them. Bill 55. And, yeah, so instead of instead of this upcoming tens and tens and tens of millions, exit Sweden, operate with dot-com brands. Isn't Pontus Swedish? He's Swedish, yes. Isn't that a problem though? <coughs> Because the company's registered in Sweden. The uh, the um, yeah, the um, the holding company. It's, it's um, the Betson AB is a Swedish company, yes. But then Betson Group is uh, is a Maltese company. So, I mean, if he gets limited company. if he gets sent to prison, I'm pretty sure his mum could get but him out in a couple of days. Yeah, but it, but is it <laughs> it's a joke? By the way, I'm sorry. <laughs> his mother is. A... His mother's a legend. <laughs> Absolute legend. Talk about protective uh, uh, mother. That's quality parenting. Um, um, but um, my mom would just left me. She'd be like, Fuck off. <laughs> "Yeah, exactly." Look Sorry what you've done. Get your own job. <laughs> Sorry, Tom Phil. Um, but uh, but I mean, it's, it's not necessarily an illegal strategy, right? I mean, you exit Sweden and, and um, it's, it's not illegal, Sweden. but you have to protect yourself from the complaints that are going to come in. Like we, I'll be, we've had some from countries which have since regulated from the past where we used to be there. But we generally will settle them if they have a case or any kind of a case. We'll be like, okay, offer them a percentage of what it should be. We don't have to go to court. Everybody wins. We'll send it to you now, whatever. Done. Well, we haven't taken any cases to court because of the risk of this happening is is bad. Yeah. Like if a, a case where they fine in this level for the player, it, it affects so much. And especially for like someone like Betson, if, they, if you think they could go... I mean, let's say they, they do a large percentage of white traffic now. I mean, every, I mean, the general consensus is they have a couple of good markets, which we don't really talk about. But they they have enough backup to focus on both sides. If they lose one side, they still have to keep the corporate veil looking 100% white, which is going to be a problem if you have to leave all the markets that are the white markets. Right. Like, what, you're not left with much. Yeah. I've got a Maltese license for, for Malta and Finland until next year when they go regulating. And then you have, um, then you have like Leo Vegas now owned by MGM. Yeah, that would fall like, right. yeah, That's like also like Push is owned by MGM. Like Push is one of the game providers that's stopping working with super offshore stuff. Yeah. So all of the American by the book, oh no, we need America, big money, is going to stop them actually making all the money that's going to be left in every other country in the world that hasn't messed up their regulation or giving back hundreds of billions of players funds here's a here's it's a prediction i think we're on a yeah. precipice so so speaking about uh, the um, new generation of operators uh, mm. the american operators are part of the new generation and i would say my underlying feeling is that uh, within within three to five years DraftKings is going to be the biggest operator in the world probably 
they have they have all the opportunity in the world to take over the entire world. They are taking over the U.S. at the moment. They are founder led. They don't have this really difficult and uh, complex joint ventures like Flutter and. Uh, it's just them. And, and it's 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 just them on their own, founder led, doing their thing. And they have the biggest partnerships you could ask about. The NFL, what the Super Bowl is the most watched sporting event in the world. Right. They sponsor it. Yep. They they are exclusive to every NFL, every sporting thing in the UK. Yep. Their name is on. It's like Mr. Beast promoted DraftKings for two videos. Yeah. And he's what the number one biggest influencer in the world. Yeah. By quite a distance now. Right. So yeah, I mean. I, it again, wouldn't surprise me. As well, I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, um, they are the best. Like they are professional. Like they are like American sharks. You know what I mean? Like, they oh, they, they are the best um, professionals at raising capital. They are the best at at uh, setting these huge strategic deals with mainstream brands. You know, they have that kind of corporate experience that is needed to build a conglomerate kind of org- organization and company. And and also throughout the years they've always been on this exponential journey mm. uh, which i think uh, the type of personality that jason robin and his uh, uh, and his uh, co-founders are they are just never going to uh, step out of that exponential race uh, I, I can't imagine him stepping aside i mean from what they built from when it came out like I, I mean i think i can say this legally i am british i have a british address which i live at <laughs> i have a DraftKings account it is it's one of the only two sites I ever really play on that and one casino. But the draft the DraftKings is an amazing, it's a great site. Like the options you have for daily fantasy, for right. like season long fantasy, for sports book, casino, everything. Again, you don't get all of those in every country, but the fact that they have that market pretty much, well, over 50% now, it's a huge deal. It's that's They are gonna be massive. If they go down the M&A route, it's just a matter of time. It's risky. It's it. risky. Like they could entertain it, yep. or they could, <laughs> or they could <laughs> flutter it. If that's a positive version, <laughs> it depends who they buy. If they just they go after over. anyone that comes around, like oh, the biggest brand in Poland is available. Say like, okay, fun. What do you know about Poland? Not a lot. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> but no, if they focus on the UK, what do you? Hang on, hypothetically, yep. DraftKings Fanjul merger. Ever possible. Fanduel, DraftKings merger. Yeah. But Fanduel, you mean Flutter? Yeah. I guess. Well, no, they'd have to sell it. Okay, so or so, DraftKings Flutter uh, merger. Yeah. yeah, yeah, DraftKings Flutter merger. I think it's. I think that would That's create too comp- too of a complex of a structure for 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 a DraftKings like liking. I think they would mm. prefer probably to uh, uh, to have uh, some competition. They, they would probably prefer to uh, to acquire a brand and bring DraftKings internationally. They will probably want to acquire international talent, licenses, um, databases, and uh, use the DraftKings brand and make that into a, a worldwide a worldwide brand. I mean, does uh, do the CEOs or anyone from DraftKings ever listen to these things? I don't know. Okay, have you ever spoken to them? Have you tried to get them on a podcast? We 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 try we constantly trying to get DraftKings on a podcast. That would be yeah. so good. Yeah. I have an idea for them. Send them. The, so they they are primarily like a lot of their profit comes from daily fantasy because they, their margins are fixed and they have. Like I play in the NFL one. There was two hundred and eighty five thousand people in it, all paying X amount. Came third. Oh, last, nice. la, no, last year, last month, last month, last week on Saturday, I came Crack third. Thanks, I won 12k. It was nice. Um, so <laughs> that's why you were wearing the uh, the watch. Uh, the, the, no, this the, is my old watch. This is my, nice <laughs> watch. This is my lucky watch. So they have an ability to iframe that to anyone. They can put Daily Fancy powered by DraftKings on an iframe, just as a reseller product to any casino, any sports book, Bet three six five. Like Bet three six five have their own fancy, but it's terrible. It's like no one plays it. It's like eighty seven people. Right. If they can have that directly through their account and pay a licensing fee and the profits over to DraftKings, they would corner the world of daily fantasy in right. in minutes. Right. Right. Which I always thought was a really good idea. Yeah. Because no one else has a product like it. No. And it's better so than Fanjules. And yeah. they're so far ahead and they have the sponsorships. And LF, NFL is the biggest one. Yeah. Uh, MLB is the second biggest one. And then I mean EPL, European soccer's quite low down, but it's it's big. 
And they have esports. You can do CSGO. You can do whatever. Partner with Steak. Partner with 500. Partner with anyone. You can put that out to the world. That's that is pure profit for right. not much work right, so. for just an API integration. And um, there, there's a, I, I just finished a book actually welcome, called uh, called uh, Dueling with Kings. Okay. Uh, this is uh, the story. It's a uh, dueling as in fun. Oh, yeah, I get it. Dealing with kings, draft kings. There's a book about this. Yes, uh, with the the origin story of uh, daily fantasy sports and how it came to be, and the crazy period of the 2010s when um, FanDuel and DraftKings were battling it out against each other. Is that right? Yeah, for, for not much money and losing a lot. And losing a lot of money. And uh, we talked about the Eureka before. Mm. And uh, the I had no idea about this before I, I read a book about this. Really interesting how daily fantasy sports came to be. Because fantasy sports has been a thing for 60 years, 70 years. Oh, I think something like that. It we, was invented yeah. in the 60s and uh, by some professors who kind of played against each other. Yeah, and... they, but they were only betting on touchdowns. I know that, sorry. You basically get a point if your player gets a yeah. touchdown and it's a season long thing and whoever yeah. wins the most touchdowns gets all the pool. So, some really like rudimentary Genius. thing, yeah. like that kind of thing. And um, fantasy sports in the US becomes a thing. Then UEGA happens, right? And there were so many American professional. Well, not many professionals, but there were a lot of American poker players at that time. Fish. <laughs> the, the, allegedly. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden, they had nothing to do. Some people, they, they go to the toilet, they sit down for one and a half hours, and they read through entire Eurega legislation, mm. realizes that, that, a gap. that there is a loophole here, because uh, in the lobbying efforts that led up to Eurega, the uh, daily fantasy sports, I'm uh, oh, sorry, the fantasy sports professionals, they wanted to make sure that fantasy sports is excluded from Eurega because fantasy sports is a skill based mm. type of competition. And so in the Eurega, specifically, it says that fantasy sports is excluded from the Eurega bill. Someone realizes that, well, if we turn the season long fantasy sports into daily, daily. fantasy sports, this is essentially sports betting. Yeah, Jason Robbins yes, sir. on the toilet. Bing, realizing it's 25 amazing, yes. billion, million, billion evaluation. Right. He can pay his CFO <laughs> 17 million bonuses. <laughs> it's amazing how you get a 17 million yeah. bonus when your company lost 500 million euros. Right. Imagine if we're, we're, even. We're, in the, oof, we're in the wrong business. Yes. Uh, so maybe maybe if the court case goes against you, you can take an even bigger bonus. I, I, they never reply to me. I keep messaging him, giving him great ideas. He never speaks to me. These people live in a world beyond our world, sadly. <laughs> Different levels. I, I would love to see that podcast, though. Yeah. That would actually be one I would be like, yeah, I'll watch yeah, that. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll do my best. So Daily Fantasy Sport came from that loophole. It was yeah. born through the Eurega loophole. Someone figured it out, exploited it, and uh, then that became Daily Fantasy Sports. And here we are today. And it's, it's, oh, it's what they've done is actually, it goes, I think like what Denise did is huge. That is huge as well. But also, I think to be fair, what Malta did in 19, late 90s, early 2000s was also pretty big, like bringing on an EU thing. Yeah. Like th these things together kind of created where we are now. Yeah. And I really think that this court case today will be another big turning point. That will be a huge one. Tell terrible Thursday. Terrible Thursday. We will, we will, I, will, I will mention this to our Red Soil team. Whenever we refer to this court case, it's referred to Terrible Tuesday. Ter terrible Thursday. First was Terrible Tuesday. So it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn into Tuesday and we're going to screw it up. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, f final point today, Phil. Um, you did a pretty remarkable job of a charity drive during the, uh, during yeah. the year in aid of the MSPCA, the dog shelter here in Malta. Uh, these dogs, I suppose, have never been happier than they are right now. They seem pretty happy. I mean, That's I had a chat happy. to a few of them and they expressed, the they expressed gratitude. I'm fairly sure they did. They yes. also told me that um, the iGaming Next photographer was average. <laughs> It's going to be in my ear now, because it be shit. Um, no, but no, I mean, as a, as a charitable fundraiser, we set a target. I mean, I'm not going to lie. We're not going to make 100K in seven days unless Santa comes with a massive sack full of cash. But we tried as hard as we could. We did raffles. We didn't set. We worked with you. Got some table sales. Got some raffle. The raffle made, what, 10.5K on the yep. night? 
So we gave away some stuff. Thank you very much to all the providers and suppliers who gave us things to give away and to you. I hope someone had a fun night in the Phoenicia? Phoenica? No, oh, that was the Intercontinental Arena. Hell. No, I mean the gift you gave. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Thank uh, you. Well, was, okay, okay, yes, Let me give welcome. you some gratitude. You're welcome. You're welcome. No, but we've had, I mean, we've had a fun year. So this was a big part of our year because we wanted to do two things at the beginning. We wanted to try and do something big for charity and become the world's only independent white label company. And as of next week, I think we've done both. So we're not tied to a platform anymore. We've got a charitable side. And then we can literally be independent in the iGaming world, which not really anyone is. If you think about it, on the platform slash white label side, you can't really go and buy a casino and have a choice of platforms. Yeah. So at least like if you want your casino managed, we actually have options now. So next year we think it's going to be a big year. Yeah, We're excited. So this time next year, I might actually speak about myself and our own company instead of everything else. <laughs> that was 2024. I mean, it's been good for us. <laughs> Amazing. I don't um, like we, these salesy podcasts. We, will, we, uh, will we see a new charity drive next year? Depends. This one killed me. Right. I might do a charity drive, but make it a smaller window of time <laughs> and focus a lot more effort into that time rather than lots of different things throughout the year. Because if, if I do a raffle, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I got, say, 300 LinkedIn messages and I have to reply to all of them. And if you imagine it takes like one or two minutes per one, that's like two days. Yeah. And I have a job as well. I've got to do stuff like this. Okay. This is my job now. Yes, yes. And um, yeah, it's just, it's very time consuming. So I would do it if it was more kind of focused on a larger scale, single or double fundraising throughout the year event. Like next, next one's a good one because we have a bit of time to get prizes. I mean, Idol, sorry. Yep. And then like we have the stage, if Idol gets bigger and more people buy their tables earlier for a discounted rate, then... <laughs> I mean, to be fair, your hosts might have some more people to take the piss out of a little bit yeah. and we can get more money because we'd have a bit more time. Right. So, yeah, I think. Oh, well, you, I mean, you, you managed, you managed to, uh, to, uh, oh, to we, raise we like didn't get 40 to 50 K or something. Yeah. Well, 50 something K, I think. 50,000 euro Phil. I mean, that's incredible. That's okay. Those dogs are swimming in crystal water. They, oh, no, they refuse to drink anything else on Evian. One of them has now sponsored my Moe and Shandon. That's happened. That's a Moe to talk. But the thing that makes me sad, and the only reason I think about this is because I'm just a bit of a dick, but take the market valuation of Evolution. Okay. 20 billion. Take us and how much work we had to put in to raise 50K. <laughs> the, two, the two don't go together. It All makes right. no sense. Our industry is so rich not because we're very good, but because it's a small industry. Like you can have a shit casino and make money. Right. Like you can have questionable games and be worth tens of millions or even with good stuff and be worth 20 billion. But it takes me 12 months of literally blackmailing people with murder to get <laughs> 50 Ks worth of value for a charity thing that's actually important to the country that we live in. It just makes me a bit sad that we're not quite as generous as we should be. You guys are, you help me a lot. But if you look at the, the big companies, I think they, they could definitely step up a little bit in their yeah. efforts. You need, you need the attention from, from, the, um, from the true, like the true, like the big uh, guys on those the big companies. And I think like if you, if you pull together some initiative that really gets the industry into the limelight or that uh, an initiative. That I think people are uh, people. People are willing to uh, people are willing to do it. I think I, th I think it's possible to uh, to uh, to add that to be honest. Like if you we need some buy because really, it's also about ambition. So I mean, you did a hundred k drive and we managed to get fifty k. So that's within the hundred k range. You know what I mean? Like it is it's in it's in that world. It's closer to the hundred k than a million. <laughs> Yes, yes it's exactly. Within the range, but 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 I th I honestly think as well it's 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 about the ambition as well. Like if you were, if you would create if you would envision, what would it take to create a an, a million euro charity dive? What would it take? Like what would get the company's attention to want to open their wallets into an initiative like this? But they don't. They don't like press. I think I think it's possible to be honest. I mean, I'm I am happy to work with anyone who thinks that would be possible. I think because then possible. we could fund yeah. all of. We could do. 
all of the animal shelters in one okay. year. We can do all of the homeless in one year. We can Here, do. Here's a, here's a idea. Here's how you do it. You, you will speak to Play and Go. You speak to Magnus, and you tell him, "We're gonna do the million your charity drive. If we manage to to succeed, or if you donate like a hundred k plus." Uh, like agree with uh, with Stein, uh, agree with Steiner. No, yeah. not, not from, agree with Steiner because they paid all the all the money to to Steiner, the uh, the, uh, the 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 chief of staff, whatever of a house, that he's gonna record a message for anyone who who donates a hundred k. That uh, you know, thank you so much, uh, Evolution, for the donation. You guys are great. Like uh, whatever. Create some, create some hype around that. Like, mm -hmm. like, think about what are the biggest partnerships? What are the biggest things that we can use as leeway here, just to showcase that this is a big thing? And you'll get, you'll get the hundred k from oh, Evo. You get the hundred k here. It's good. The only thing is that takes more time than I physically have <laughs> without other people helping. Like, if Evo send me a message saying we'd love to help you next year, I have an idea. I'd be like, yes, mm -hmm. or anyone. I mean, literally anyone. Yeah. Like you guys message said, we, we want to do something with Idol. We were like, oh, awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Like that's one event. We could do one of hundreds of event, like um, Beck Constructs Harmony thing. That's yes. a massive event. Yeah. They, they could, yeah, yeah, they could cool. take, they, I mean, they do something for Cherry, obviously. I have no idea. I'm not there. I've never been invited. I think so. Yeah. They do. Okay. But if they didn't, they could say, okay, we yeah. want to do something with it. The soft, soft about Cyprus. Soft about. That they spend 200 billion on them, famous people who can sing. I think thing. it's possible. You go to you go to software, you go to Back on Track, to, to the others who do these events, tell them we want we want you guys to contribute with a hundred K and it there's going to be something attached to it, like like for example the uh, the the house pit boss doing something cool, or like you you um, use oh, some other like big. I reckon I could get Magnus to give me some tickets to do it face to face. I reckon I could persuade. Yeah, him. I think like it's possible. He likes me. I think we can. I think we can do it. Honestly, I think it is absolutely possible to do something like that and raise a million euro. If we get Magnus some LSD, I reckon we could get a lot of him, according to Mr. Tomic. Yeah. Yes. I like this plan. Let's think about it, Phil. <laughs> we'll have we, a think about what we can do for 2024. We'll, co we'll continue the discussion offline, my friend. We should go after like children or something. So we should save children <laughs> next year, I think. Save the children. Save the children. Or the people on the boats in the med. Or donate to the UKGC's relief, relief fund. They need it. They're running low. Yeah. I mean, I feel sorry for anyone at the UKGC right now. I know times are tough, but it's Christmas. Santa's coming. Santa's coming. Santa's coming, don't worry. <laughs> or as they say in Malta, Christmas father. <laughs> Christmas father. Christmas father. <laughs> country's Phil. crazy. Merry Christmas to you, my friend. Merry Happy Christmas year. to you. 2020 has been great. We're going to 2024 with uh, a lot of excitement, let's call it. And there's a rumor that I'm getting a pragmatic chair for Christmas, so. You know the email address. Phil at pearson.water.unfilter.com <laughs> Close. Filled up person at whitelabelcasinos.com, but we'll take it. <laughs> oh, stalkers now. All right, my friend. <laughs> See you next year. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. We'll do it again. <laughs> All right. <laughs>